everybody and welcome to the stream i'm rachel and i'm steven we did it guys <laughs> we're finally there and we are the faint divinities a channel here on twitch dedicated to creating content around dagger heart which is the new tabletop rpg system from the darrington press and critical role groups that is currently in open beta um, if you haven't been following along with us, which you should because we have a Twitch where we go live every week. That's where you guys in chat are right now. But we also have a YouTube. We have a Twitter. We have an Instagram. We have a Discord uh, if you want to be our friends. And again, like I said last week, you should want to be our friends. We're pretty cool. Um, but if you haven't been following along with us, today we are running our session two of the Daggerheart Quick Start Adventure. Again, this is in open beta and the adventure is called the Sablewood Messengers. Um, so to start out, we are going to go around the table and very briefly introduce ourselves and our characters. Um, remember, we gave full kind of background items last session so if you want those full details go back to that one it's already there um today will be very quick just to keep things moving but before we do that i did not say in the last stream that we have thanks eli k <laughs> uh woohoo indeed uh last session i didn't say it and i really should have all of our art, all of our character art was commissioned by an incredible artist and friend of the channel, Bugaloo, who very often is here in chat while we're airing these live on Twitch. Um, she is so, so incredibly talented and she can take a character from just a few basic concepts and references to a full-blown character with all the bells and whistles so quickly and her commissions are open so if you need any of your art for your own table for Daggerheart please check her out uh, again she's referenced here on Twitch on her YouTube she, on t every tweet I do with her art so please do check her out um, and thank you so much bug you are incredible so okay moving yeah. on I promise that's it <laughs> <laughs> our uh um, handled uh, art is also done by a good friend of ours, Jocelyn. Um, nice she's those, uh, she's working on some um, social media aspects right now. So once we get some information for her, we'll also be posting information on her. Yeah, absolutely. Jocelyn Hyundai, I believe. I, I yes. yeah. And again, our artists are referenced on the channel, and we don't have contact information for Jocelyn yet. But if you really like that and that matches your vibe, let us know. We'd love to reach out to her and put her in contact. So, okay, I've done a lot there. We're gonna get started. So. We're going to go around the table with introductions. I'll go first just very briefly. I don't have a player character because I'm Rachel and I am your dagger master or game master, whatever you prefer. Dagger master if you're nasty. Um, and then we'll go on to Steven and I should be sharing your art in just a second. There you go. All right. Um, yeah, so I'm playing uh, Tedios and uh, he is accompanied by his... Uh, companion um, Wilbur, but they are Bill and Ted. Um, Tedios is a Simran, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Simia. Simia, yeah. And then um, Bill is a bird, is a rooster. Mm -hmm. I have all of these standees, so I will do this oh, just briefly. Yeah. So here, yeah. you know, since since I can't get the technology to cooperate right now. Can you guys see that okay? That. A very handsome monkey. A very handsome monkey. I think it is a little uh, bit blurry, but there he bit. is. And you mentioned your beast companion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Bill is a lovely bird. <laughs> All right. Um, and Justin, do you want to give yours? Uh, yeah. Justin um, playing uh, Jimbo, the Ridgeborn Dwarf uh, Rogue. Uh, specifically the syndicate rogue so. yeah that's me kayla uh i am kayla i'm playing anora she is a highborn ribbit bard and she's just here for the vibes <laughs> <All right. laughs> and chris i'm chris i'm playing tank mollerson the wonderborn fairy called the brave warrior and then as a wonderborn i gotta pick one so yeah. I shuffled the deck. I got the Orderborn here. Woo! Cool. So nice. what does Orderborn do? 
good question. It <laughs> record three sayings or values uh, your upbringing instilled in you once per short rest. When you describe how you're embodying one of these principles through your current action, you may roll with a d20 as your hope die instead of a d12. This might be the old one. Well, that's that's okay if it is. You know? I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think they changed it. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's going to be huge. So when you are ready to do something that you really want to succeed at, that's the time to invoke that class feature and you can use that for your success. So, all right. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thanks. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to keep this pretty short, but those are our characters. Uh, and at this point, we're going to do a very brief recap just for those of you who are joining us for the first time. So, at the start of the Sablewood Messengers, essentially what is going on is that Marlowe Fairwind, and again, this is my note for any note takers out there, it's time to get your pen and paper ready, <laughs> because there's a name, Marlowe Fairwind, who is the sorceress to King Emerus, the principal sorceress, has tasked the group with a very secret and very important mission. Um, she has some history with our Swamp Princess, Anora. Uh, she knows her because Anora is royalty, and so she has connections with the royal court. And she had heard that Anora had been adventuring of late and holds her in high esteem, not only because of just how dope she is in general, but also because she knows that Anora as a ribbit uh, and from a, a the Black Gum Swamp? Black Gum Hollow? Yes, Black Gum Hollow. Yes, okay. she's from the Blue Marsh Kingdom. Yes, you're correct. I Very love good. It so much. So proud of um, <laughs> Is an excellent uh, outdoors woman, so would very easily be able to traverse across the Sablewood. So, uh, they were given this important task to complete, and they therefore were given a carriage and adventured forth into the Sablewood. Our last adventure began with them entering the Sablewood, where very soon after they came across after a bend in the road an overturned cart with a merchant that they found to have had his neck sliced. And as they were attempting to move the cart after, out of the road, uh, they were ambushed by thistle folk. Uh, thistle folk thieves and ambushers. It was a pretty gruesome battle at first. It was it was pretty pretty grim there for a second. They got off that ambush. I had some really good rolls, uh, and then uh, Anora really manning the charge of getting us back into fighting fit shape. Uh, blasted one into smithereens and then everybody got in the action uh, we had tank and jimbo with a tag team roll we had bill and ted just simia monkey and chicken rooster just clawing at, yeah someone to absolute shreds someone tried to run away uh, and the last moment the thistle folk ambusher that was left alive did try to run away but tank being a warrior Put an end to that. Yeah, just muscle said, city, baby. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> he said, nah, nah, nah. He prevented that with an opportunity attack, held him in place, and got the, how do you want to do this, a critical role special. Uh, there at the very end, spraying with blood. They did get cleaned up, got the card out of the road after that battle. Um, had a few little adventures there by the campfire, and someone, Anora, I believe, as a bard, had heard a rumor that if you did not keep a campfire lit the entire evening while you were resting in the Sablewood, that you might be spirited away come the day. And although she had not wanted to be part of any of that fey nonsense, uh, she was convinced by her friends <laughs> to, to allow them to proceed with that. And so they let the campfire die out. And the next morning they awoke and found that rumors in the Sablewood sometimes are more true than you would think. And as part of that, they woke up not knowing where they were. All of their items were still here. This is a quick start adventure. We can't be losing all of the things all at once. Um, but they found themselves to awake there outside of a palisade wall to the city, a town rather, of Hush a town deep inside of the Sablewood. They gathered their things, including their carriage with 
the mysterious package. Remember that we haven't talked a lot about this crate yet, but there is a significant crate, a crate of significant size, I will say, that has been transported with you guys. Um, it is gonna be, it's pretty heavy, it's pretty big. It's probably the size, because y'all are all, again, halflings in a trench coat sized party, it's about the size of any one of you, you know, maybe a few inches shorter. This is a big crate and it's there in the carriage. Um, but you did gather your things. You were allowed entry into Hush. Um, and as you pass through, remember that your ears popped upon entering and all of a sudden you could hear the chatter and the laughter and the rabble rousing from a very busy uh, marketplace and town so clearly something magical is happening here some kind of arcane ward bubble of sorts around this city that as you enter through you can hear but is otherwise protecting you so you guys remember the whole journey is that you are looking for now that you're in hush the white fire arcanist You've only been given her title, um, or their title, I should say. You're not sure who they are or where they will be found. But as you enter Hush, and this is where things are going to be new information for your group. As you're entering Hush, the first thing to note is that this is still, it looks wild. It looks like a forest. The canopy of trees is still very much above you. Um, this town really was built in and amongst the town of Hush, uh, or uh, amongst the Sablewood trees. So it's not this new, different urban settlement. You are still inside of a forest. And as you are entering the town of Hush, um, though the trees of the Sablewood are unchanged here, there is a distinctive, safe and comforting air. A few smiling faces turn to you as your carriage rolls in, waving or casting a warm greeting toward the party. There's lively music drifting your direction from the tavern that you can see at the center of town. You know that you need to find the white fire arcanist to deliver the package from the king. What would you like to do? You want to have a problem with just, you know, popping into the tavern, just giving a quick look around, you know, this person's not from here, right? So it could be, you know, stopping by to visit. Maybe someone's seen them. Everyone wants a drink. Mm -hmm. I'd love a drink. A little gossip moment at the bar. <laughs> so as... <laughs> so you guys are just kind of following that music that you can hear, some lively mm -hmm. fiddle music, I'll say, for Nora. Um, out of a bar. right at home. Mm -hmm. As you're traversing in, I do want to note that people are watching you move. Every good adventure starts at a tavern. Absolutely, Jane Screen. It's just mm -hmm. true. That is absolutely true. <laughs> so as you're traveling, there are a variety of people. And as you are passing by, they all see you and they look surprisingly happy to see newcomers. You see a small human boy who's waving wildly to you with a, he actually has a gap in his teeth and he kind of pulls at the arm of his father who's standing next to him and points and he nods down at him. You also see uh, a larger dwarven woman with a thick beautiful beard you know that i like my my female dwarves with a luxurious mane uh, she's strolling through with a huge barrel of ale on her shoulder and you can actually see that she is headed in the same direction as you towards presumably that tavern it looks like this barrel weighs nothing to her um, there's also. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna run up and get the door for her as she's getting up there. <laughs> oh, a gentleman. Oh, so yeah, how else are we gonna get free drinks? So, <laughs> and remember, this is an intimidatingly large dwarf. She is not quite as tall as, as you, but she is barrel chested. She has a sterner <laughs> face, though not a 
quite beautiful and a big luscious red beard and as she turns to you she says oh my god aren't you a gentleman Jess has the a voice that you had not expected at all from this mm -hmm. well look at you there thank you so much for helping me out that is so kind of you anytime ma'am are you a newcomer to hush uh, yes do we have to say it in a whisper <gasps> No, I was just oh, really okay, excited. Oh my goodness. It is so nice to see newcomers around here. We have not seen anybody new in, I don't know, maybe two or three days. Um, it is just so fun to see you guys coming in. Where are y'all hailing from? And oh my God. And she looks behind you and she can see a weapon strapped to uh, who here is, well, it might be anyone. Who is specifically proud of their weapon in this group? Who has a gorgeous weapon? My big thing, my big pickaxe is on my shoulder. <laughs> okay, well then, you know what? We're gonna start with the person that she is right in front of you. She just like peeks around your shoulder and she like blushes a little bit. She says, now that, that is a beauty. Where did you get that from? Oh, What's its name? Why? <laughs> This is my working tool. That's my, that's my pickaxe. Oh, it's a hardy tool. A working tool. It? Oh my god, I love it so much. When was it forged? He starts getting a little flustered. Looks back at his group. Hey, hey, hey guys. Uh, meet meet some of the nice nice time folks here. <laughs> at this point, she kind of smiles. Oh, hi. There. Oh my god. And she looks over to to Bill, or sorry, to to Ted, and she sees your weapon, and she says, "Oh my god." That is the most beautiful weapon I have ever seen. Where did you get it? And again, she is holding a huge barrel on her shoulder this whole time. She is now inquiring about your weapon. She wants to hear more. She must hear more. Well, I, I can tell you about it. Do you want to? Do you want to go inside and set the barrel down? I'll walk with you while you. you oh, you this? Have... No, I'm all right. Yeah. You just can't just go on. Just do go oh, on. Okay. Well, yeah. No, I mean. We had them in my village. Uh, they we, we used them to help climb certain areas. Uh, it was very beneficial. Oh my God! You know what I always say? Do you know what I always say? I have no idea. I don't know who always you are. Say. A weapon is just a friend. Oh, oh well, yeah, I yeah. A point yet? Right at this point, a clank, a small human or sorry, not human at all, a small, uh, this is a robot effectively in this universe, a small clank that has actually a fox bat on his shoulder uh, rolls into view right next to this woman whose name you, I don't believe, have inquired to just as of yet, but he rolls into view and this fox bat on his shoulder is kind of chittering and he comes up and says, well, hi there, Smiley Dadia. Oh, jeez. Hello. Do they all have Still the same hello. accent? Hello, Maybe Fred. Maybe it's a regional thing. Maybe it's a oh regional thing. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, Lousa, he turns to the dwarf as he says this. Well, Lousa, are these newcomers? Hi, I'm Tank. Nice to meet you. Lousa's kind of nice nodding <laughs> sagely. <laughs> it's so nice to meet you, Tank. Uh, wh well, how long have y'all been here? uh right now oh <laughs> so, about, so you're a so you're very new well it is truly nice to meet you and i am so happy that you chose to join us here in the lovely town of hush as newcomers to the town you have guest privileges guest privileges dick to error 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 and he been well hi there smiley day to you are you new uh um well, well, I was at your, uh, your, your friends, uh, Oh, 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 you, you are problems. just so right. I am so sorry. Listen, Halithorn, these are new friends, but you know what? I think that a few people were looking for you over there. And as she does this, you see Halithorn kind of, hmm, well, well, I, I, I was hoping, you know, I, I got a new thing the other day. And if these are new travelers, I, I'd really like to try it out if you wouldn't mind too much. And I will tell you a little bit about the world that you're in, okay? Because this has not come up very much. But we live in a world of magic. 
So there are a lot of accessibility tools um, here in the town. So for example, you might see people with mobility issues that are being carried through the streets on chairs whose legs actually walk for them or hovering on pillows. And in this case, this robot, uh, this clank, you see reaches into a little satchel on his side and he pulls out what is a little triangular disc with two, or not disc, but two little triangular uh, piece of metal that is inlaid in the front with two small holes. And you watch as he bends his head down and he pops it onto his face. And he says, this here is the Sniffer 5000 and I have never been able to smell people before. I am so excited to smell newcomers. Is it all right if I give you a sniff? Do you like Sniffle the smell away. of dirt? I'm sorry, what, what, what do, do you like the smell of dirt? I don't know what dirt smells like. I've smelled a few things though, and I would love to see what uh, the dirt smells like. And he, and you hear the oh nose actually, <laughs> the nose actually <laughs> lights up a pale yeah, blue as he begins to sniff. And you can see it doing little calculations and his eyes kind of glaze over and he says, oh, well that's terrible. I do not like that one at all. What you said that was dirt, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, all he goes up from here is what a, a narrow tells me. I, I don't smell too good. So. It's an acquired well, smell, they say. I start here and, you know, work your way up. Well, I, sh I shall not be sniffing you any further. May I, who's, can I smell the rest of you? Absolutely. Okay. Then he goes up to taste. Oh, my says, God. Oh, you smell lovely. What is that smell? Oh. It's is the it smell it of... The pure mintiest mint, kind of like Colgate, oh, if you've heard of it from your. I have not heard of Colgate, but it sounds like a good friend. What about? Okay, okay. What about your little Simia friend? Can I sniff you? Sure. <laughs> like a, like What's a, that like smell? A, 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 a hot, a hot bath. It's like a real hot bath. You smell, you smell like, oh, you know what you smell like. And he looks over to his shoulder and sniffs his fox fat. He says, you smell like Tom after it rains. That's a nice smell. I'm fond of that one. Uh, and, yeah. And you little miss, could, could I sniff you? Please. I'm sorry, Halithorn. You, you cannot, you cannot smell a princess. It's not, it's not something that we allow. It's, it's not proper for a later. Oh, yeah. You can smell the rooster, though, if, yeah. if Ted's fine with it. That. He kind of wanders aimlessly over, and he goes up to the rooster and... Oh, that smells like... Dinner? Bill does not know <laughs> what to think of the clink walking up on him. He smells so like dinner, but he's not dinner. <laughs> I won't eat it. Well, miss, I, I really do appreciate everyone letting me smell you, and I do understand that no means no. I shan't be smelling you if you wouldn't like, but I really would like to beg you if I could. Please. No. Are, are well, you know what? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How much money do you have? Mm. Well, um, this is going to take a roll. All right. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Money? Well, I, mm -hmm. I do, I, I do work an honest day's work, and I make wages for it, and I certainly am interested in investing in my hobbies. So I, I couldn't see the harm in giving you a little bit of of money if it would make a difference. Now I would like to ask you. I'm going to ask you to make a roll for this. Um, okay. Now this I think is going to be a presence check. Um, and you okay. could utilize an experience for this. I actually think, what, what is, is your highborn here? skill? Let me go find the highborn page real quick. I think you get advantage in like money issues specifically. Okay, being part of the highborn community means you were part, you were born into a life of ele elegance, opulence, and prestige within the upper echelons of society. 
You have advantage on roles you make to consort with nobles, negotiate prices, or leverage your reputation against the All right. Okay. So you're going to go ahead and roll a presence check. You get advantage, so you're going to make your duality roll first and then re-roll your hope die, taking the roll that you would like on that hope die. Probably the higher okay. one, but if you get a critical, then you'll choose that. So go ahead and roll first, and then we'll do it. Okay. Eight. It's eight and eight. So that's, that's a critical, right? That is a critical success. It absolutely <laughs> is. Oh. First critical of the show Let's on a on a, yeah. on a okay all right on all right. a smell check on a weird kind of who knows the, fantastic that's what this is that all about terrible. baby so <laughs> all right <laughs> so Halithorn so first of all that does count as a hope you get to go ahead and add a hope to your log if you haven't already done that and then I'm going to let you. Describe to me, within reason, what he pulls out of his satchel. How much money you think he might pull out of his satchel. Four coins? I would say go a little bit bigger. I would say go a little bit bigger. Really? Can I get a handful? Sure. Why not? Okay. He's okay. a robot. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> so as he, he, he says, check is wild. Yeah. He says, I, I don't, you know, I, I do an honest day's labor and I, I do mm -hmm. believe in investing in my hobbies because I play tabletop RPG. Um, and so he pulls out and you can actually see a pouch of money. And he says, well, I, I don't adventure far out of hush. Is this enough? And it is like a handful of gold in a pouch that he kind of hands mm -hmm. over to you. Big money, big money, big money, no whammies. <laughs> <laughs> and are you taking that is enough money to sniff a princess. Yes. Well, smiley day indeed. And he's going to adjust his nose ever so delicately. And he is going to... He's going to hold out a little wrist. Let and him he's, take a and sniff. he is taking a sniff. He, again, is very delicately doing this. He is trying to be respectful. He just, he just, just needs a smell. And then as he does that, he goes, Oh, I know a smell like that. That smells like like sweet moss. It reminds me of fresh cut grass. Very cute. Well, you should be a perfumer. Crazy. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope that you have a wonderful day. Remember that every day is smiley, even the darkest. And I'll be seeing you soon. Bye-bye, everybody. And he pops his nose off, pops it into his pocket, and just begins rolling out of ways. <laughs> All right. Oh, that was an interesting fellow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey. So at the this louse is still just standing there at the door waiting on us. <laughs> she is, and she and she the entire time she has just been staring at all of your different weaponings and just just oof, that is so oh beautiful. God. Like in muttering to herself, she is very interested in these weapons. But as he rolls off into the the not sunset because it is early in the day, remember, he is going to uh sure sorry, she is going to turn to you and say, Well, this uh this this keg isn't give, getting any lighter. I mean it's not getting much heavier either, but are y'all ready to go inside? Would love a breakfast beer. Oh, I also love a breakfast beer. I think we're going to get along just fine. I hope you get to stay with me. And at this point, you notice a couple of things, okay, that I'm going to set the scene with. First, as you've been approaching this tavern, you've been coming up to a enormous tree, okay? Just so the largest tree that you've ever seen, absolutely larger than redwoods that you see when you get to drive your car through. You, it looks like you could fit most of a town inside of this tree and it stretches up for 
feet, hundreds of feet above. I'm bad at distances, by the way. I hope that's a normal size, but I'm gonna say it's just very big. It's just very big. And actually, in point of fact, you can see as you look up all of these structures kind of jutting out from the tree that have been built around it, though you can see no way to access those. Um, the tavern itself is smaller, and it's set here at the ground level, and you can see that right in front of it, uh, there is a sign across it that says the Clover Tavern. The Clover Tavern is a sight to behold with six curving stories climbing the trunk of an ancient tree. This is the heart of the community. It's always crowded with music and good-natured conversation. Newcomers to the bar must take off their shoes and hang them over a line that stretches across the bar's ground floor. Inevitably, by the time the visitors leave, their shoes will be shined and filled with small trinkets. So, that is, again, part of the quick start adventure, but I want to respect the adventure that's been built for us. So we are entering in at this point. The other piece that I want to note is you guys have not seen any inns, any play, any taverns, any, oh, I'm sorry, not taverns, any inns, any Airbnbs. You haven't seen any place <laughs> yeah. that you could potentially, no six. exactly, no, no Motel 6, that you could potentially rest for the evening. Um, and something about the way that Lausa said, I hope you get to stay with me, kind of resonates in your ear as you guys enter into this establishment. Now I'm going to take a step back. You guys tell me what you see in this tavern. Give me the vibe. I want a vibe check. And if we think up on like floor four, there's like a intense poker game uh, kind of going on, you know, possibly people like on the edge, you know, looking down towards the uh, entrance. But Absolutely. Definitely some gambling going on up here. And as you're walking in, they're all like waving and waving you up. Oh, come on. You know, they're very, everybody's so excited to see you guys in a way that it is almost unnerving. You know, it's a little concerning. All right. Yeah, too friendly. Little candy valley. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess also like going off like the main entrance way, like a little, little like dugout to the side where there's like a little fighting pit down there. Oh, Some absolutely. people, you know, staying active. Are people fighting in it right now, or is it too early for fights? I would probably it'd probably be too early for fights, but you definitely see like people down there like getting their stretches on. You absolutely do. You certainly do. Okay. Anyone getting picked up still from the previous evening? They just like you know slept it off there. <laughs> I love this. This is so fun. I've never like got to ask people to build a tavern for me. I've only ever done it. Okay, this is fun. All right. I want things from everybody because I'm having too good a time. Chris, what do you Some see? Some guys this arm moment? wrestling over by the bar. Okay. And they're hollering and shouting and I'm dying to get in there. I love that too. Okay, fantastic. We we might pick up that in a second. Kayla, what do you see? Or or smell okay, or the... hear? <laughs> on the second floor there is a drunk piano player he is almost passed out he's got two dancers one is laying over it and the other one is like stroking his hair he's an elf oh, oh i love he's obviously that. very popular here and is he still <laughs> playing well despite his drunkenness or is it yes. just <sighs> yes but i mean he's missing like to the trained ear you'd be like there's something off but everybody else is just having a great time they're like oh my god he's the best Amazing. I love that. Okay. All right. Okay. So then you guys tell me what you're doing. Well, first, Lausa does turn to you guys and she says, well, now listen, I really do appreciate you opening that door for me. And again, if you need anything here, you have those guest privileges. So you just ask away, but I'm going to be back behind the bar stock in a little bit. Okay. Is there anything you need? What do guest privileges entail? goodness is this truly your first time in hush first time okay well listen first of all as you've probably noticed there are no ends in hush no sorry uh -uh. we don't do that around here if you come into our town you are welcome to stay with anybody that you would like and we are all so happy to have you now you only do get to do that for three days or else we're gonna let the trees handle you you know but uh but yeah you can stay for three days at any one of our homes and if you'd like to stay longer you are welcome to move on to another guest but again i would be very cautious about overstaying your welcome because things get a little bit dark. 
But we are so happy to have you. So it's smiley day to you. <laughs> smiley day to you too. You know, that's Please Alice always saying. Not really mine, but you know. <laughs> are, are these other people here also guests or they are, they they live here? Oh no. No. I you know, we we get a bustling amount of newcomers and guests, and some of them surely do, but you know, um it's been less this season, though I do expect that there will be I really love I'm going to take a moment in chat. Squire says you can check out but you can never leave and I love it. Um so, like that. <laughs> um oh. so she she's you know we we haven't gotten as many guests recently as you do know it has been winter in the Sablewood. Um but we are gearing up for spring. And I don't know if you noticed but people are starting to put up decorations outside because we are right here right looking up at the first moss festival which is why by the way you can see these people these fine patrons of my establishment doing this arm wrestling they would love nothing more than to be the champion but do you think they are gonna beat me no sir absolutely not you, you definitely do seem like a strong one mm. uh, I, did, I did have one I last am. question for you, you, you oh god you, you mentioned that there was another guest that came in two three days ago there sure do you was. know who who they were guesting with you know, we, we aren't at liberty to divulge other guests' information, especially when it doesn't go well. Okay. That's, yeah, that's mainly why I was curious, making sure they didn't overstay their welcome, as you said, just to be cautious. You know, we are very hospitable, and we expect the same of our guests. Absolutely. Everybody took their shoes off, right? <laughs> And that is a great point and we will shine those for you we like to lay a few trinkets there on your way out but if you if you will just throw them over the line you know we appreciate it do you all throw your shoes over the line yeah yeah i would hate because, to be begrudgingly because they're nice boots and she is self-conscious about her little blue toes, but Aww. she does it. <laughs> I'll, leave, I'll leave my socks in there just in case they clean those two. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. They, and they, just no. so you know, they absolutely are gonna, yes. I've got my bare feet on this nasty cover floor. <laughs> it's very clean. It is surprisingly yep. clean. Okay. It's not yeah. sticky at all. Floor. It's not the okay. sticky. Right. Steven, Teddy Ocean, is he? does he wear shoes? Nope, I don't wear shoes. Fantastic. Uh, I mean, technically, uh, Bill has, I think he has metal tipped claws. Do they want us to oh leave the metal tipped claws at the door? I mean, they haven't specified one way or the other about your metal tipped claws. You could. I don't know that, that they, they're used to having them, you know? God, I don't think I'm going to take the time <laughs> to take them off. Leave an acorn in each one. Oh, yes. Acorns. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Okay, so shoes are rested. We are all just dogs out, and we are mm -hmm. we are inside of this tavern. I know that we. I've already heard someone is interesting in the arm wrestling that's happening. What else? What else is going on? Uh, I'm gonna lean over the the bar and and ask if they do if they serve. Uh, do you serve sake here? So I'm going to say that a. This is going to be a dwarven male, actually, uh, is going to kind of look up and he is doing, man, just classic bartender stuff, you know, with a rag, just cleaning up. I don't know how there are so many dusty cups in a bar, but he is, he's getting to work on it. And he kind of looks up to you and says, Saki, we, we, you know, we don't get a lot around here, but we do have some. I could, I could see if it's to your liking. You do have guest privileges. Would you like? It's something? okay. It, uh, no, I'll be fine. Actually, if you want to try something new, you know we are renowned for our fire wine, and fire you wine. look up at the the shelves behind the bar, and the first like three are just various liquors and bottles. The top row, though, is an entire row of these clear glass bottles with a glowing golden liquid in it and he kind of gestures up to those you could always try the fire wine it really is one of our biggest hits here in hush maybe i'll come back afternoon and i'll, I'll think about it then that's very hospitable of you i think that's great yeah is it 
like what part of the day is it right now oh is it, it is morning? early guys remember y'all woke okay. up outside of the town so whenever y'all decide okay. it's is really it but it would be pretty early in the morning yeah i'd walk up past uh past ted and just, uh, oh where's my beer uh I'm just gonna... <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh yeah. You got one of those big glasses up there. That'd be that'd be nice. I'll, I'll clean it afterwards if you want. Oh, that's that that's really kind of you. Yeah. Uh, sure. Sounds good. And he's going to lift his arm up, and one of the glasses just kind of whoop, springs out some feet, and is going to clamber down the wall, and then do a little wiggle moment and hop over to the bar and then you can see the one of the bottles kind of lifts levitates like fantasia style over and and then it is there in front of you now i do have a pretty important question for you guys though because i don't think that i have gotten some clarity on it what did y'all do with your carriage and your crate <laughs> not just outside <laughs> It is. It certainly outside. is. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. That's totally fine. It again. That's mm -hmm. that's that's totally fine. I, I assume guest services or you know guest uh, guest privileges went over to cart. Did they park our buggy for us? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do y'all? You, right? you guys have gotten the vibe of this place. If y'all mm -hmm. think that someone would have come out and been like, "Let me take this," you know, for you, then that will have happened. Yes. Let me know. They okay. could be grooming okay. your horses as you speak. I just you know, went at the least, like you know, not not stealing it or taking the tire or taking the wheels off. You know. Okay. All right. Yeah. Absolutely. Then that is happening. But I am going to say that we as... had a ballet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. They. Had, you guys have a ticket and they have the keys. Um, I will mm -hmm. say though that at this moment you hear some like, sorry, clicking and clattering, and you look down at your foot and you can see the crate is there at your feet. And when you had looked at this crate in the back of the carriage, it had like these um, large metal borders on it, kind of encasing the crate. Um, and those have now unfurled to make these spindly like spider legs that it is walking around on. And it is following you, kind of l looking up at you, almost like a puppy. And it's just kind of following you. Y'all won't have to carry this crate. Well, this reminds me of Molly. Uh, hey, uh, quick question on this cup. Did the legs tuck away? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as soon as it sits in, they kind of do the same thing where that metal kind of wraps around it and becomes a beautiful decorative piece. Oh, I don't like drinking out of things with legs on them. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. You're missing out. It's not Jimbo. Um, Bill, keep an eye on that crate. Like it's spider legs. For the purposes of this game, I will be Billy goes, and he kind of like wanders over to it, and you see him kind of lower his eyes and kick his feet a little bit, revving up at it. The crate kind of wags happily. Like, <laughs> I'll uh, go to the bartender and I'll say, I'll have one of what he's having. Uh, keep the legs if you can. Oh. And can I also get one for the? The fine lady over there, the lady who carried the barrel. Sure, absolutely. For Lausa, sure, I can do that. No Lousa. problem. And because you've requested no legs, he is going to kind of walk across, and you can see him pull a ladder back. It's one no, of those I rolling he, ladders. I the legs. He wants to keep oh, the legs. Oh, you want to keep the legs. Fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, yeah. And so your yours is going to, uh, sorry, tank. Your mug is going to come right down, clambering down the bar. And for yours, it's going to stay on those little stilts. And actually, as you're kind of like walking around just like absentmindedly, it follows you across the bar wherever you are it's just kind of like walking back and forth that's yeah. amazing y'all have your beers your ales except for me a... i i'm a lady i don't drink in the morning yeah you would never <laughs> <laughs> All right. i take a sip of the beer and i ask anora um so you have red hats and your parents have white hats yes this is correct if I were to have a hat, what color, what color hat would I get? <clears throat> Solid see. question. Okay, so the people that have hats are royalty, noblemen, and merchants. Are you any of those things? 
I'm kind of a merchant. We trade our bath, our our, our hot springs for things. Really it's quickly, I need to ask sorts. Jimbo, what color is your hat? My hat? Uh, yes. Mostly brown. Mostly brown. Okay. I, okay. I, I have a big gem on my uh, belt buckle, though. Nice, nice. I <laughs> I don't... Is the Tooth Fairy royalty? This is my thing. Are you royalty? It's quite fabulous. <laughs> quite fabulous, but like, you know, do you hold a court? Money. How would you define right. royalty? Having been That's in the presence of a lot of in, riches? In a certain way. I mean, we all know what what royalty is do you you know do you rule over people are you sovereign i rule over the fantasy of of teeth oh. <laughs> child happiness hey, as I much as it. i would like to give you a hat I, I don't think you would have a hat i'm sorry no hat no hat no hat is but Jim, you... she is very curious about what you are because no one wears a brown hat merchants and noble folk wear blue hats but no one wears brown hat i'll wear a brown hat i know so you've got to be like some other level of royalty that she's never seen before yep we keep to our uh, Jimbo is pretty fantastic i've known him for a while and the whole mm -hmm. time he's never taken one bath there's okay. something special about it Never once? never once never once never once and in, 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 in like he just really likes his dirt he it's there's something about him and the dirt he just protective it's protective he always claims protective okay. i mean i mean okay. i'm just saying i've seen him take gold. a hit before i might try and find some stuff for you someone something befitting of your station Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm honestly super excited to see what his boots look like clean. Oh my gosh, I hadn't Wait, thought they, of that. You think they clean the outside? Oh, 100%. I clean assume they're just cleaning the inside. <laughs> no, they're cleaning it all, but what? when you get those boots back, they're going to be shiny new. Uh, the I can socks, fix that. too. <laughs> I can fix that. It's amazing. <laughs> I mean, I do. So I have a question, though. You said, because I'm learning about the lore of your kingdom as well as part of this. So merchants do wear hats, blue hats, you mm -hmm. said? Yes, the same as, like, I guess, like, noble people, the people that have, like, the king and queen's favor and stuff like that, they also can wear a blue hat. Okay. But it's just the, the white, the red, and the blue America. Yeah. America. Oh. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Nobody else. Nobody else gets to wear a cowboy hat. I I love that so much. Tank, mm -hmm. as a trader of teeth for money, presumably. Oh. That's what I was saying, but I wasn't going to press the sell? issue. She Do doesn't you want sell the? Have a hat. Wait a minute. Hold on. You sell the teeth? No, he just. Keeps it's a trade. So. He buys the teeth. It's a, it's a, the okay, because I've it, I've seen you in a battle now, and you killed that person. I don't think you bought the teeth from them. I think you murdered them. You for paid for what they're I like. traded his death for his yeah. teeth. It, that is, some people would claim you know, that your life is the must always be an exchange. You not own. condone death merchantry. We're not <laughs> into that. Yeah, no. it's not specifically kill bad. in order to get a good. It's that that teeth are early. just murder. Do you like uh, go that's and how find the blue homeless bars. people and ask them for their teeth? Is that like the move? What was it? <laughs> so do you go and find like homeless people and just like ask them for their teeth? Is that no? Typically children teeth, and then yeah, okay. I come in and trade. Uh, a toy that they wanted. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, that is uh, trading. Yeah. That is. You could wear a blue hat for that. Not for killing people and having one person hold their mouth open while you pride the tooth out. And that's what my but people do. Fairies, what teeth fairies do wage war. Experiences you know? are, is traders' keen eye because we, we always would take, take things for our, our hot springs, but not just anything. That's that's a mighty fine hot spring. Mm -hmm. 
Jimbo like, gave us that giant ass crystal, and he hasn't even used it once. So like, it really fucked. Yeah, we didn't need it. Up. Yeah, no, no, it's not good. No. So what we end up having here then is we have a princess with her red hat. We potentially have two merchants with who would be qualified to wear blue hats. She would allow it. She would not get upset if they wore a blue hat. And then we have an unknown brown hat wearer of mysterious. He's very curious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. To yep. Know. That's my hat. He might be. She's not sure. But like a brown hat, never seen it before. Could be a god. Doesn't Whoa. know. Could be. It's Deep. a brown hat. Unknown. He did He's find got eye that gem. He found that He won't gem. be able to tell until she gets some soap to him. It's wild. He hasn't he ever taken a all. bath. He's never <laughs> yeah. soaked in the hot springs. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pros and cons with Jimbo. Okay. Um, uh -oh. By the end of this, hopefully he'll <laughs> be <drinking> a beer. <laughs> All right. So we've had a hat discussion. Is that going anywhere? Are we doing something here inside of the tavern? We're just taverning. That's great. Uh, we should probably yeah. go. We should probably, you know, ask the people that are here if they've seen the person we're looking for. Yeah, we do. Right. We, I, I, I do. I am worried they are the other guests that overstayed their welcome. Yeah, that was a good. That was a worry of mine too. Also, I'm not gonna try to take very much from these people because they're just giving it away for free, and that's not how you do business. I, I gave them apparently all the dirt off my boots. Uh, that's very valuable to me. Did you give them all the dirt off your boots? Fair trade. I don't know if that's a fair Hello. trade. I wouldn't call it a fair trade, but um, they, I mean, maybe it is because I'm so excited to see you in clean boots. That's beautiful. Um, so what I are guess, we doing, guys? Yeah. Could I maybe, are... oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, like, she could go to the second floor and kind of try and talk to maybe the piano player. Yeah. Be like, you guys, uh, you got any arcanists in this town? She didn't say anything about a white arcanist, but she's like, Is there any arcanists around here? I would love to peruse their scrolls. And okay, so you have approached the pianist as you do. I will say that the lovely ladies kind of fawning over him, they they smile delicately at you while still draping themselves across the piano in him, and he continues kind of tickling the keys and says what <laughs> what and she's just like Ar arcanist 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 what he is um and an he arcanist. closes out a song and turns to you i'm so sorry yeah. an arcanist an arcanist yeah, yeah. uh what yeah. what wh wh kind of arcanist mm -hmm. just a general just a generalized I mean, practitioner. Preferably a white one. White. Magic wise, not race. Oh, <laughs> oh the you, the white fire arcanist. Is that who you're talking That's about? The one. Oh yeah, That's yeah, 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 yeah. She lives in the tree. I knew you would know. She lives in the tree. tree. Yeah, she, she lives, lives in a tree. A tree. Yeah, it's not far. It's you know. You There's go. a lot of trees uh -huh. around here. There are. Is, is there big, a specific one? Tall, tall tree. That's pretty big. Um, just a house, and it's in a. It's it's, it's looks like a fruit. It's like a big, big fruit. Looks like it's ready to fall out of the tree any moment. She's, what? She's what kind of fruit? Is it a strawberry? I never really thought about it before. Persimmon. Pomegranate. He kind of like you see him glazing over, and he starts kind of playing the piano, <laughs> and under his breath, going. Persimmon. Persimmon. He's now making a song about persimmons. I don't know that this guy is going to be your best bet for figuring right. out much more about the white fire arcanist. All right. Well, I did my intel 
gathering lads <laughs> y'all want to go while you're up there else. while you're up there mm-hmm. though because you have so you've ascended there are all of these staircases that kind of mm-hmm. loop around the center of this tree that has been hollowed out you know as you've entered mm-hmm. in and everything uh, but there are also staircases that wind across the outside and everything um, as you have climbed there uh, the pawpaw fruit they're in the south the pawpaw for fruit. Eli K. <laughs> um, so uh Very you're now on the thing. second floor now that you are up here and you're able to see it how does the second floor of this tavern look so wildly different than the first floor what smell permeates throughout this place um we're gonna say that it has like lots of like different kinds of red rugs just like overlapping lush curtains stuff like that incense is burning up here it's a much more sensual vibe wow up here this is why the ladies are dressed the way they are like in their finest like silks and everything they've got little like wings you know around their ankles and stuff like that to make noise when they dance so it's a very you know sensual space up here I love that. Okay, you do see even at this time of day, there are some serving girls who are of of varying different ancestries walking throughout the area because you can see that the people here, a little bit of a more refined nature than those of the lower floor, there are serving girls walking around with platters that have little fruits on them in kind of a honeyed looking syrup. And they are offering them to guests. One of them does come up to you and kind of, would you like to try the fruit? What kind of fruit is this? I've never seen anything like this before. Sure, absolutely. I need to find the actual fruit. I want to use it, but I can't remember what it is mm-hmm. called. So give me just a moment. Are you looking at that? Uh, Hank, are you, you getting in on this arm wrestling? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. If there's like a competition, we might can rig this. <laughs> I wonder if we could wrangle in the uh, lady who I bought a beer for into Ooh. the contest. Well, she did say something about her being the champion. <laughs> We're going all the way to the top. No I'm nudge. Very Power excited couple. for the arm wrestling. <laughs> So the server at this point, she uh, she kind of shows you and you can see that they are these large red orange berries and you see her kind of press apart the fruit with her nail and you can see inside of it that there is a small insect floating in its center like a pit. Um, oh and my she, god, and Nora loves bugs. You do love He bugs. loves them. Mm-hmm. What kind of bug is that? Is it a fly? It, has, it is whatever your heart most desires. Oh my god. Yeah. There's no way she could turn that down. I hope this is not bad for me. I hope this is not a poison apple because she's got to eat it. You Don't have. eat the worm. You have to eat it. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. She's she offering to. it to you. You do have guest mm-hmm. privileges. So, okay. all right. All she's right. going to take it from the, the beautiful ser- serving girl and she's going to be like, oh, thank you. Okay. So all much. right. So as you are eating, so you pop it into your mouth and it mm-hmm. is so sweet and delicious. Um, and it is a, so this is a delicacy among the residents here. Um, when consumed... You may, now you guys are at the beginning of it, but you actually feel very briefly this euphoric moment that actually might not be related to the fruit itself and might more so be related to this sable sap that it's kind of floating in. Mm -hmm. You feel a little bit relieved, like your stress is dissipating, almost like you're sinking into a warm bath. And were you to have any stress remaining, you can actually clear two stress as part of this moment from this. I'm already clear, but that's amazing. She feels great. (laughs) Perfect. Absolutely. Okay. So that is what you are doing up here on the second floor. But let's go and return to our other members of the party who are down on the first floor. And you've been looking into that area that I'm going to say that actually in the, well, the fighting pit was separate. Chris, you had brought up the arm wrestling. They're just arm wrestling here in the tavern, right? 
Yeah, yeah, over there, uh, close by the bar, okay. a couple tables down. Great. So you can see, and it is a small group of uh, both both men and women uh, that are gathered around here, and they are practicing. You can actually see, though, that they are trading for little trinkets. Uh, one of the people has a couple of acorns that he's putting in. It doesn't seem like these have any value necessarily. Someone is using coins, um, but a lot of people are using indiscernible trinkets of varying types that they've ascribed some kind of value to and as you approach tell me what happens i ask one of the players that are there and i say uh seems that uh trinkets are kind of a big deal around this town uh what are what are those okay absolutely so you go over to a guy and this is another dwarven male in this case it seems like there are a fair few dwarves here specifically um he actually is clean shaven completely clean shaven uh but he kind of shushes you a little bit and says hush 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 look look ah and he watches as the other guy kind of slams the fist of of the um of the second guy that he was fighting and he kind of turns to you and says Oh, the trinkets. No, no, no. That You know, that's just up on the third floor. There's a casino. And so we can trade some of our coins for different tokens that indicate a cost specifically. Um, like an acorn there. Well, that's two coins. And oh, you see that thimble there? That's four. So it just it just depends. But you are more than welcome to jump in if you'd like to. We do have a ton of of, uh, of people that are getting ready for the first Moss Festival where we will name the new champion of Hush and I am gonna beat Lausa. I am. How many uh, How many rounds do you, does one have to win to uh, challenge Lausa? Oh, Lausa, she's, she's willing to jump in anytime you want her, but I don't think you want that smoke, honestly. She kind of looks you up and down and he says, she's a fierce warrior. I say let's let's uh I'll buy her another beer and then we'll give it a go. Maybe it'll weaken her a little bit. <laughs> he kind of like his his face gets really excited and he kind of like pats a couple of the guys over and he's like, "You guys, someone's challenging Lausa. I'm gonna go get her. I'm gonna go get her." And he goes over there and you see him like talking to the bar hand for a moment who brings down another drink and they kind of smile over at you, grinning. Then you see Lausa coming from. Uh, this is a good time to introduce in one of the walls here of the area that you've entered there actually is a smaller door and you see that as that door opens Lausa comes up from an area underneath so she's stepping up and you can see that she is now carrying nothing and you see that man conversing with her and she looks up at you and her eyes a shadow almost passes over them she gets like momentarily darker before she kind of perks back up and starts jaunting across and she says well hi there again i hear that you'd like to challenge me what do you got i heard you like guns <laughs> i certainly do like and she's going to kind of shoulder the guy who is sitting there at the table out of his seat and she sits down on the bard and you see she t bard on the on the bar stool and you see she does take her beard and kind of tosses it over her shoulder the full length braid and she reaches out her hand to you as you are still standing Hey, Tank, real quick, are you are you offering your arm as like the bet? Your your gun? Oh, the bet I was going to offer uh, <laughs> um, information. She kind of puts her arm back. Well, that is very interesting. What kind of information are you after? Uh, Whitefire Arcanist. Oh, sweetie, the white fire. Well, I could tell you where the white fire arcanist is. That's free. Oh, yeah. Then maybe ask something that isn't free. Sure. Oh, well, 
I do love a bit of intrigue, but I am gonna have to know before I settle any bets. What are you asking me for? Uh, what happened to the people who came before us? You don't mind asking? Her eyes kind of twinkle a little bit. She says, hmm. That's a... And the, the the area that you're in, all of the people there, kind of gets pretty quiet. And she kind of smiles over to other people. And it's a it's not an excited smile. It's kind of a nervous smile. And she kind of lowers her gaze and says, Well, that, you know, that certainly would be a valuable secret to let you in on. I'll tell you what. I'm pretty confident in my skills, but you do have quite the guns there. Ten coins. If I win, I get ten coins. And ten if coins. you win, I'll let you know. Sounds like a good wager. I nudge Jimbo over there. Hey, Jim, let me get some of that dirt. You good my for hands. it? Please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, put my arm on his hand and kind of rub it. <laughs> so lucky dirt. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So at this point, with you having nodded, she is going to, again, sit at the bar and she kind of gives you a look and she's going to extend her hand and say, now we play best two out of three. You got a deal. All right. These are going to be contested rolls. Okay. Um, and so I, oh, wait, I have to use the one that I chose. Okay. Oh, no, I have to use a, a D12 in, a, in this case. We're just going to roll D12s specifically because there's not oh. going to be a consequence. This is going to be a contested item. I will allow you to well no at the very tail end this is something interesting my fellow gms i might ask for a little bit of help on this because the the weird thing here is that we're making contested roles that's usually how this would happen right mm -hmm. um so usually with that you're just going to use like a d12 against another d2 or a d20 against another d20 um, but in this specific game since there is that hope and fear mechanic i'm struggling with how to introduce that any any reason not to just do two d12s for each person and i don't want to say ignore the fear and hope but if you land on a tie if you get hope you win fear you lose oh that's that's a fair point yeah I think, you get I, I, I think that's fair yeah absolutely okay great and now i get to actually roll my duality dice which i haven't been able to do yet okay that's gonna be fun for me mm -hmm. Just a second, I have to find my hope She's die. Like, I haven't been able to do it. I don't know where they are. <laughs> I have my hope die right here. I I always have the fear one out, but okay. Yeah, I agree. We're gonna we're gonna roll the duality dice in this case. We are going to ignore the fear and hope consequences of this specifically. Okay, um, but it you will tell me though if it was with hope or fear it just won't have a repercussion okay okay all right so lausa has her arm out there and are you using anything for your role by the way yeah i'll expend a hope here and then use the tickets to the gun show since i mentioned it okay all right absolutely you can okay and you are making, what kind of trait are you using for this? Generally, this is gonna be a strength, but again, this is more of a loosey-goosey system. I'm happy to take thoughts if you have something. I assume generally it would be strength. I wanna wager on agility and the true trick to arm wrestling is speed rather than just strength. Okay, so like, get, so do you mean putting all of your weight into it there at the very beginning to like catch her off guard? Just going as fast as I can to hopefully <laughs> use my stronger trait, which is agility. Um, that I worked the first time. 
Yeah. <laughs> True. I just don't know if to me arm wrestling is an agility skill unless you can give me a way that it works, you know? Mm. Yeah, I think really the issue is because it's like gonna it would be like a three, two, one, and it's like tough to like. It, it might work the trick. first round. You're just, you're yeah. just not you know what? <laughs> fair, fair. I will let us use it the first round. Absolutely. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. All right. The so dirt's already paying off. The first round, you're <laughs> gonna get to use the agility. Make sure you mark your hope off, and here we go. Are you using the tickets to gun show on this one? I mean, he can, as long as he's got hope, he can use it on every one of them. That's fair. Yeah. All right. And he is full. So, uh, 20 with fear. Ooh, I have a 12 with hope. Well, actually, 22 with fear. Oh, man. This is hard to manage the hope or fear aspect. I think it just has to be numbers, you know, in this I think, case. I think for the... Yes. I was just only, only worry about that part if it's a tie. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Fantastic. Oh, okay, so... With that first one, she puts her arm on the table. And in that moment, as soon as you sit down, you are going to just grab her hand and then really fast, right? Okay. In that yeah. moment, she feels you moving her arm in that moment. And you feel her muscles tense up. And then she has it down on the ground. And you hear the entire kind of area go... And Lausa like kind of looks at her arm and looks up at you and goes, "Now, that was almost cheating, but I'm gonna give it to you. That was, that was some good competition. I love a good little spar here." I my mustache. Now that's not gonna work <laughs> two times though, darling. And she's gonna put her hand. She like shakes out her arm and kind of tenses her muscles. And then puts her hand back. Uh, no, she's even going to spit in her palm, rub it off on her. And then she puts it back out. Now, this time, you are not going same. to be use agility. Okay? <laughs> Gross. Yeah. Oh, Fantastic. my fingers <laughs> spit. spit. Oh, All right. God. And again. Are you, uh, using uh, another oh, hope? Yeah. Could I use another hope? Yeah. You could use as many hope as you want. I'm going to allow you to use those into this. Now, you're not going to regain hope throughout these rolls or anything. But yeah, if you want to expend them, that's totally fine. So, all right. You ready for a second one? Oh, what is that? Okay. I have a 10. Six with hope. <gasps> Oh, this is my favorite one. I love it when it's like somebody wins the first one, somebody wins the second one because then it's tied. So with that second one, with that 10, she takes it and this time you feel her strength and she begins pushing down. Now it's not a solid win, right? A 10 is not a very big score. She does struggle it and maintaining and locking that eye contact with you. She just slowly, slowly. And then... I see you, motherfucker. Mm. <laughs> All right. And she kind of shakes it off again, and this time rubs both of her hands together. All right. Well, I do love a challenge, but I'm afraid that I just cannot let you win. Guess privileges be damned. So, I'm ready when you are. And Third time's the charm. You ready? Come on, Tank. You got this, Tank. Oh, I'll spend another uh, hope. Okay. All right. And again, this one is Going a strength ahead. thrill. This is a strength thrill. So strength here we go. <gasps> I have a 15. Critical? I, got two, <gasps> Critical, <yeah. laughs> I love it when the dice are trying to tell a good story. Okay. So you tell me what happens as this in slow motion you guys are going back and forth, just like holding there. You can feel someone pushing back and then a little bit more. And then as you are feeling her begin to slip, you can see her eyebrows go up a little bit in fear at the moment that is about to happen. And you can explain what happens in that last moment and how she reacts to it. Okay. As she's getting fearful and I'm gaining a uh, ground on her, the spit that she spit in her hand is, uh, you know, making like a slippery surface on her hands with the dirt that I got off of Jimbo. <laughs> and her hand's starting to slip. And uh, I sh 
shoot it down, and then I do my mustache again at her. It's kind of like a little. All right. Pause. Just a little Teasing boast. Her? A little tease. Yeah, little it's, a little, it's a little flirty. But friendly. A little, yeah, yeah, a little friendly. flirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. She I likes the guns. I get it 100%. So, in that moment, remember, she is the reigning champion, okay, of the first Moss Festival. Now, this is preliminary stuff. This is not actually the fight to be the champion or anything. But the room goes quiet. Everyone who hadn't really honed in there at the beginning, the first slap, you get a couple of people seeing, and then they start whispering amongst each other. That second slap down on the table, you hear a more loud and persistent whisper. By the third one, you have people looking over the rails, stopping what they're doing. The piano man is still kind of drunkenly tip-tapping on the bar, but both of his ladies have come over to look as well and are kind of gossiping amongst themselves. And in that last moment, as you slam it down, the entire tavern goes silent. And then you hear a raucous, ah! um, and the piano man taking it as a cue, thinking that they are excited about his playing. He starts up a, the dancing girls are dancing. It is a wild and raucous energy in here as you roll that critical success. Even though we were not rolling with consequences, I'm still going to say that you get a hope off from that um, because it is a critical success and that's super fun. And in that moment, she's uh, because it was a critical success, we're going to do something very special that we weren't doing. And now, Anora, I'm saying that as part of this, you've wandered back down to the table and you're there with them, okay? Okay. okay. And she... <coughs> is going to kind of look at you incredulously and look back at her fist. She looks up and sees you twirling the mustache and she is going to kind of grin and scooch away from the bar and says, well done. Well, if I'm going to have to tell you a secret, it'll have to be in a secret place, won't it? Gather up your friends. Let's go. And she starts walking towards that door that had that staircase that you had seen her coming from below. Okay. The secret basement. Never let him get you to a secondary location <laughs> upstairs. Let's guarantee Make sure Bill comes with us. We need him. <laughs> I went back over to Bill in the crate. Like, can y'all do stairs? <laughs> <laughs> like the, the crane kind of wags again and kind of shows you how spry his little feetsies are. Yeah. I don't like that, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know? I, I, look, I look at Jimbo, I like, Bill lives with me on the mountains. <laughs> Y'all had more of like slanted walkways, not really a lot of stairs. Yeah, but he's got, he's quick on his feet. She I'm is... more worried about the crate. <laughs> <laughs> Lausa is walking mm. pretty quickly, confidently over to, again, this small door set into the wall of the outside. And she kind of, you see her walk up to it and she whispers something at the door. And uh, oh, yeah. let's see, who has good presence here? Who has the highest presence? Presence? I mean, I have uh... two. Plus two. I have a good instinct. Can I, I have try a to one for presence. Uh, uh, yeah. Who who's trying to hear? I don't care who it is. We're not rolling for it or anything. Is anyone trying to hear? I'm being polite. No, I'll try. Adora to... wants to know. She's freaked out. Okay, great. Yeah. All right. Secondary um, location. I, what is... I think uh, Anora and uh, 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 Ted are having very similar trains of thoughts right okay. now. Yeah. So as both you... both next to each other making like wild eyes at I'll one I'll say another. you both hear it. And she says, the inner rings are reserved for the innermost. And at that point, did y'all hear it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the inner yeah. rings are reserved, reserved for, for the, the innermost. innermost. And at that point, the door kind of... <laughs> opens and you guys can see as you begin to descend what order are we going and just just out of interest just so i can kind of give like context i'm in the back because i'm trying to like chug my drink and i try to quickly kind of clean out with my shirt then i set it down and say run back okay. uh and then okay i assume um, i'm probably right behind her after the duel okay 
E right. and the crate are in the middle somewhere. The Fantastic. crate's by me. I'm patting him, okay. and we're going together. Fantastic. And it really is um, great at climbing down these stairs. Now, you can see that at first, there is actually a... Uh, because it immediately drops off, and you can actually see set into the side wall here, which is effectively the bark of the outermost bark of this tree. There is a little alcove where a guy is sitting, a human older male is sitting there with a little torch and he's the one who opened the door for you. And he kind of, as Lausa passes, kind of nods and you guys begin to go down and follow into the depths underneath this tree. And as you descend down, it is well lit by torchlight that are that is lit and everything. And it begins to spiral down. And the further down it goes, you're beginning to see that the ground stops being like stone and is starting to be more soil. Eventually it does kind of even out into a path and you can see mangled roots in the sides of these walls with still torchlight, okay? The crate- I'm marking this place, guys. <laughs> there you go, <there, laughs> yeah. Um, no concerns though, at, you know, and she kind of looks back over her shoulder a couple of times at you guys and grins. But then you guys abruptly after walking for mm, i would say pretty short moment maybe like a minute or so you guys come to the end of this hallway and there is a second set of stairs a stone set of stairs just like the first one but this one though here you can see that in the center of it there is a red lush carpet that has been tacked to each of the steps, unfurled up these staircases, almost, again, rich in nature. And she begins walking up the steps, and you can hear as she gets up to that top, the winding happens again. At the top, though it's difficult to see from down where you are, you actually see a much finer door than you came down here for. Again, if somebody could get the bot in chat, that'd be fantastic. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> um, but you can see uh, a very fine oak door. This one with golden filigree kind of inlaid in it with actual pictures as you guys are starting to file in because she has opened the door, this one swings inward rather than into the actual thing, inviting. But as you're passing it, you can see that those golden filigree inlay, it's actually depicting some small specific things. You see things that look like fireflies and there in the center, a much larger firefly with holding with a human-esque hand a staff and a glow kind of emanating out from that encompassing what below you see now is the tops of trees and inside of this room i'm going to let you guys tell me the specific decor and everything you guys can set the tone for this room but you walk into a luxurious inner circle bar. This is where the well-to-do kind of come to drink. This is not the entry tavern. This is, you can look around and see the guests here are of a different caliber. None of them are drinking ale. What does this room look like to you? The regular. I pour my ale out real quick before anyone sees. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a vibe. Give me a vibe for this room. You tell me what you guys are seeing in your mind's eye. Uh, I mean, like gemstone, like uh, uh, kind of like encrusted like tabletops and stuff. Okay. What's Ooh. the lighting? Is it bright and off and like? You know it's dim. That's what I was saying. Yeah. You kind of dim. Maybe you know like, like a, a blue light, like a mm -hmm. blue tinted light or something like that. Great. 
Tell me about eyes wide shut vibe, but that's the that's the lighting. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Okay. Then we are all there together. Our mind's eye has gone to a similar place, right? We enter a luxurious speakeasy type of den, but with all of these really incredibly lavish fixtures, right? These gemstone tables cut from gemstones. Who? Uh, let's see. Kayla, could you tell me what's the bartender's deal? What do they look like? The bartender, hold on, which one is it? It's the cow person. What are they called? A fearbog. Fearbogs? Yes, it's a fearbog. Um, but they have like a gemstone nose ring and they are all white, like albino, but they have red eyes, you know, like an albino. So they're, you know, and they're decked out all in like purple and stuff. It is, um, it's a man. Okay. So there you go. All That's right. what we got. Great. And he's behind and you see this is, he's not cleaning. We talked about this is what every mm. bartender is doing. Not, not this him. one. He's making cocktails and he's doing those things that cost like in the real world sixty dollars for a cocktail right exactly oh my gosh i saw i went to the best restaurant this last year and you see at one point he's got two shakers and he's one in each hand and then he strains them out into two into four different cups and then you see him pull like one of those little tools that he scorches and blows through and smoke wafts over the top of them and he kind of clicks. The big ice cube where they like get the big blades and just like cut it down and boom it comes yes. up just a little cube this yeah. is what is happening in this room the music in here is slow and dark and it is a gorgeous room Lausa kind of waves a hand in and I'm going to give a second to see if Tank gets back but what questions do you have for me right now I, I, I'm really curious how these people are either still going from last night or they just don't care what time of day it is so up in the or morning this, or this may go this may get crazier at night yeah. Um, you can see there aren't like a ton of people in here right now. And the people that are here seem to be conducting business, right? But just mm. rich people business. Rich mm. people. I don't know if y'all know this, but rich people be drunk all the time. Like rich don't. people need a cocktail to yeah. close the deal. Like, I, I, you know, from my years of waiting tables, I did not know. But rich people, they don't have a, a, a legal limit for alcohol before driving. <laughs> they will. Art rules 24-7. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So anyway. OK. So Lausa at this point is going to turn back to you. And her voice, though still very, very chipper, does has dropped a little bit. And she says. Well, you did want to know a secret. Welcome to the Inner Rings. So, why don't we go have a little table? Hey, Samuel. And she kind of speaks over to the bartender and he looks up. Hi, Lausa. And she kind of turns back says, Could we have four of you all drink gin? Hey, my name is Jim. Mm, okay. Did, uh, is there any mint we could put in it? There, absolutely there is, sure. And so she, there is not fussy. She does drink gin. Great. So Samuel kind of clicks and winks, and you are going to see them begin. <coughs> She's going to take you over to a little cut alcove with a table in the center. That is a booth. And you're all going to sit into, she's showing you to sit down here at the table. Well, you know, you asked your question, which is what happens to the people here who overstay their welcome. Well, you know, we are very, very kind people here in the town of Hush. We invite any newcomers around. We are very accommodating. We don't have any inns. People come into our town and they are allowed to stay as long as they'd like. But there are sometimes some consequences, you know. Someone will stay in a house for three days and then it's time to move on, but they move over to another person for three days. And we're, we're, we're fine. We take that on the chin. 
And then they move over to another for three days. And while they're there, you know, those guest privileges, they can take just about anything that they want from our house. They have first dibs. But, you know, we have to protect ourselves. Unfortunately, we don't really need to protect ourselves too much. The trees really do take care of us. They, they'll handle just about anything. And at this who wants to be freaked out? I'm going to say 10. At this, you are sitting in a booth, again, that is carved out from the earth itself. And there is a jutting root here. And as she says, the trees take care of it. The One of the, uh, one of the roots kind of unfurls from the soil itself. And you can see it kind of plant itself on the table. And Lausa reaches down and like sh gently strokes the root before it curls back into the wall. She says, we don't really have to do too much, honestly. The trees handle it. it the yin tree never did anything like that. What's the yin yeah. tree? Above the yin tree. Yeah. Your drinks are delivered to you, by the way, and those are all sitting there smoking for you. I don't know if y'all are drinking at this early well, hour. Of the question: day, but you, you mentioned like we're like you know guests are welcome to take as much as they want, but is it preferred that they still pay? Oh no, no, we truly are. I, I don't want to be perceived wrong. We truly are very accommodating. I, I mean that so sincerely. And we love newcomers and guests. That is how the town of Hush is built. We're built on being kind to strangers. We just need to warn people that they cannot take advantage of, the, uh, of us, you know. Um, yeah, that's it. I promise that you, you guys all seem like fine, upstanding folks. Now, I will say that that first little round of of uh, of our arm wrestling contest, it almost got me a little bit upset. But we would never feed you to the trees for that alone. No. But it, but it counts towards that. No, 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 no. We really are talking about those people who take advantage of our hospitality and our laws. You know, guest privileges, they only extend so far. Now, do you guys know actually who y'all are staying with while you are here in the town of Hush? You're welcome to stay with me. I truly do mean it. What about, what? What about this white fire arcanist? Is that oh. someone we can stay with? You know, you did mention that you were looking for her. Yep, absolutely. You know, she. Can we stay with her? Sure. Why not? If, if mm. the guest privileges extend to everyone, you absolutely. I wasn't could sure if her house was clean. I just figured oh. I'd ask. Oh, her house. You know, clean certainly, tidy and organized. Not always. You know what I mean? Um, but but she's she's lovely. And and again, you can stay with any of the residents here in Hush. Mm -hmm. um, do you have you met with the, um, the White Fire Arcanist before? Oh, not yet. Not. No. What is it that you're um, that you're trying to to accomplish by seeing the White Fire Arcanist? I noticed that you have that very weird little crate over there that's following Yeah, you she's around. gonna pat the crate, and she's like, "Gotta get this, gotta get this to her." Uh, what is it? I don't know. It's rude to open other people's mail. Oh, you're a you're couriers, okay? <laughs> for trade? Uh, yeah. We're couriers for this. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah, no, um, so the Wattfire Arcanist, you know, she lives uh, on the outskirts of town. You know, I think you, I did mention to you earlier that the, we obviously are beginning to get the fruits of our labors from the planting of the mosses around our sunless farms. You know, the sun doesn't really filter in too much down here, but we do have a lot of fruits and vegetables nonetheless, and our glowing blue moss, uh, it's just now beginning to sprout and spring out. Now, once that takes hold, it's going to, man, create just a variety of delicious treats for us. But we still have a few weeks yet, and that's when the actual fire, first moss festival is going to happen. But 
you know, if you pass those sunless farms where you can't miss it, that glowing, that glowing blue moss, it really will almost poke your eye out. Uh, but if you walk past those a little bit, there is going to be a pretty big tree. Not nearly as big as this one, obviously, where we here host the Clover Tavern, but it is pretty big. And, uh, you know, the Wattfire Arcanist, she is, she's a little eccentric, I will say. And her, her house is suspended there in that tree. So you'll see it. it. It looks like, well, it looks like a fruit that's overripe and ready to plop out of there. Like a persimmon? Well, you know, I never really thought of it. But I'd say, yeah, maybe like a persimmon. <laughs> like a persimmon. Is there any special way to get up there since there's no, like, doors? I mean, I could fly, but... Can, can we just ask the tree? Well, you, you, seem, you, know. you know, I never actually have visited her home. Um, I don't know. I never thought about it. Can we just yell from the ground? You can try. Okay. She does have leg. excellent hearing. Mark on the tree. Is there anything you can tell us about her temperament or anything like that? We don't want to name. We don't want to bother name. her at oh. a, like a crucial time or anything. You know, I it's don't like think a... she has a name. She's just the Wildfire Arcanist. You know, there for a little while, some people got to call her wifey, but I think that was oh. a fun old white fire wifey. Wife. It was a some kind of joke. Happy wife. Fire Arcanist, Happy Live Fire Arcanist, something like that. I don't remember, but um, but it she she didn't really like it. She's um, she's eccentric, you know. She uh, prepare yourself for I could. Oh, she's a little bit morbid, truth be told, you know. We love her. She maintains the wards around Hush. And she's incredible at abjuration magic. So she actually maintains a lot of the wards throughout the continent. She also is responsible for the fireflies. Don't let her <coughs> catch you messing with those fireflies, by the way. Um, they are near and dear to her. But for, for someone who has lived so long, I think that maybe you just begin thinking about your life there. And I guess I could tell you, you know, she's probably going to ask you about death. She talks about death. Man, she talks about it all the time. She is so interested in it. And yeah, so yeah, I, I don't know. I wouldn't be worried about it. She is, again, a darling, an absolute kind soul. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. But yeah. Is she the one that made us wake up here? I'm sorry. Uh, well, see, we went to sleep, and then we didn't have a fire all night, and then we just woke up outside the city. Well, now, sweetie, how much fire wine did you drink? <laughs> I, well, we but, don't remember drinking any, so it might have been a lot. Ooh. I must. I mean, yeah, I guess there's logic. Jimbo, did we get drunk last night? I usually remember. <laughs> I get drunk every night. Over yeah, Bill. I'm like, Bill. Well, I, I don't know anything about waking up in strange places unless <laughs> fire wine is involved, <laughs> you know. So, uh, but that's, that's up to your own proclivities. So, yeah. But, I mean, I, I really do appreciate that y'all have come through. Y'all are really interesting guests. And truly, if y'all can give me the name of the people who forged those beautiful weapons, I would love to take them down. I like to keep a running tally of the best weaponsmiths all across, you know, the continent. Uh, but our friend Bugaloo the third. Love that. Quite, Thank you. Quite the smith. She kind of pulls out a little pad and she takes a little note for herself and tucks it back away. She seems like a fine artist. Oh my goodness. Uh, while we're here, and he took us to this <laughs> top secret, very nice place, is there any people of interest you think we should yeah. get acquainted with? Are you talking to. Like that. to... Um, uh, Lausa, Lausa. Lau, Lau, Lausa. <laughs> Lausa. All right. Um, she looks kind of around. Uh, you know, there's 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 a lot of people in town that you might like. Uh, what what are you looking for in particular? 
I just imagine there might be some interesting characters here in the high roll section, maybe. Oh yeah, listen, this is this is truly where everybody comes through. But honestly, people tend to like to be left alone here. Although you know, she kind of lowers her voice and leans in. Now, don't look right now. She looks at you all pointedly before she continues. <laughs> But there has been a gentleman that has been here for about two days now, and he has not left. Over there in that dark back corner, and you all... First time I Nora you. immediately, she has no tell. I mean, you can't really tell because <laughs> her eyes are going in different directions, but she just got of I, I asked before I turned dramatically, but you know, is he a guest? Well, he, he certainly is, but, you know, he ha he's not actually staying with oh. anybody. And he doesn't seem to be utilizing our guest privileges very much. Jimbo, what? as you turn, would you explain what this guest <clears throat> looks like, knowing that you recognize this person? Turn look oh, oh, shit. <laughs> Bernie. I'm guys, sorry, guys, did you uh, say Bruni? No, 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 guys, uh, we just probably go. There's a short dwarf, another, another dwarf guy, it, I, I know him, at least. In... Another dwarf guy is I mean, my note right. that I'm putting down. But where, but where are we going? Oh, uh, we gotta go to the fruit house. Is it that he doesn't have a beard? This guy, I don't know what this guy looks like, actually. Oh, uh, I mean... Somewhere to me also has a hat, uh, also brown. What kind? Uh, a brown hat? Oh no! Uh, but he does have a beard. It's much shorter though than mine. Apparently. It's not much as glorious, shorter. but it is another brown hat, and you're scared of this other brown hat. I'm not that scared getting. of him. I just, you know, I'd really not talk to him. Like, long hey, story. Long that story. sounds like scared, but okay. <laughs> we used to run in the same circles, kind of thing, you know. I don't live. I don't live with my people anymore. Obviously, he doesn't either. Apparently, uh, but we should, you know, not bother with it. Okay. Are you sure? If you need help, you know. Well, I don't need any help. I'm just, you know, something I'd rather not. You know, we're on a mission. We got to deliver this crate. All right, guys. You Code red. Help. Four guys we, in a trench. We, we can <laughs> Four guys in a trench coat. I'm gonna just gonna scurry out of here. We got a chance. So, Freight on its butt, basically. Get it out of here. So as you guys are leaving, it sounds like y'all are trying to slip out. And that mm -hmm. seems to me like the time to learn a new mechanic that was just released in version 1.3, uh, oh. which is a group attempt at something. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to read this because it is on the play guide, by the way, the new play guide that's part of everybody's character sheets. This is called uh, a group action. You are going to nominate a leader of this action. I feel like maybe it's going to be Jimbo in this case, uh, but right. it's really up yeah. to you. Gotta be. All other participants in the group action are going to make reaction roles. So of the same trait that you're doing. I think this is probably going to be like finesse. Any successes give the leader a plus one modifier. Any failures give the leader a negative one modifier. After all other participants have contributed, the leader makes an action roll, including these new modifiers. And if the action tracker is active, it's not. The leader adds action tokens for everyone who participated. Now again, that's not here. I am going to say, this is gonna be a little, I'm gonna set this at a 15. It's certainly worth it being at least medium. 10 is an easy check. It's certainly at a 15. It's early in the morning though, and he's been here for two days, so I'm not gonna make it hard. It's a small area. He's maybe dozing a little bit, but I am going to need from Anora and from Tank and from Tedios, I'm going to need a check to see if you beat that 15. Does hope or fear matter in this one? Uh, nope, it doesn't matter in this one, I don't okay. think. Are you rolling both dice or just one? The duality, yeah, both. The duality okay. dice, absolutely. And you, I get to add the finesse, the plus one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that this might be 15, some of... right? 
15. Absolutely, I did. Yeah. Now, are you I, adding anything to the role, by the way? Uh, finesse. I I okay, just your finesse. No experience. Oh, you know what? Um, I could. Well, no, because I'm not. I'm fine. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And before you guys roll, let me know if y'all are adding anything to it. Yeah. Could yeah, I sure. say Swamp Princess and just knows, like, she knows how to make, like, a gracious exit, like, you know, without drawing attention to herself? That is the entire, <laughs> yes. That is how this game is played. Is Man, okay. ex I'm finding out quickly that really <laughs> the OP thing in this is being creative enough to give Imagine a reason me. that your experience works. Because <laughs> Kayla can swing me with anything. I'm like, oh my God, yes, of course. She yeah. just knows how to, you know, she's not wearing skirts, but pick up her skirts and scurry away quietly. It's amazing. Now, you will mark a hope off, oh. you know, um, yeah. because, yeah. The good old I should buy indeed. And I think I might, mm -hmm. as part of my survey feedback, kind of give that feedback that we've had twice in this, which is like, in these kinds of weird cases, does the fear and hope kind of really play in at all? Because yeah. I don't think it does. I think that would be crazy if I was like, oh, y'all yeah, rolled three wouldn't. fears, you know? Um, it wouldn't for the initial ones, but maybe for the final one? Yeah. So. Yes. That one will certainly matter. Yes. Um, now, Chris, are you adding anything to yours? I just had a quick question. So if I have an ability that could use an action roll, is, would it work for this? So yeah, as a fairy, so right, I have luck bender. So once per session after a roll, oh, yeah. me or an ally within close range, I could spend three hope and um, re-roll the duality dice. Yeah, I would say absolutely. I might add that to your survey feedback, though, that that should be clarified of whether it's multiple types of role, but I'm gonna say absolutely. Action role kind of to me is inclusive of reaction roles and attack roles. So yes, um, but it could be clearer. Okay, and so then, I know Steven is, oh, go sorry. ahead. No, you're good, go ahead. Um, us three roll and then Jibbo rolls? Yes, yeah. You're okay. just trying to beat a 15 with anything that you're adding. So go ahead and you guys roll with anything that you're adding. Let me know if you need to add anything or change. And then tell me your score. Uh, 19. Fantastic. We have 17. Hold on. 18, 19, 20. Oh my God. Because it's 17, and then the two, and then the one for finesse. Wow. Okay. But All it right. isn't helped. And no. Wow. <laughs> All right. And, and Ted, you had a 15? Um, I did. Wow, okay. So then, Jimbo, you have to beat a 15, and this is an actual roll, but you get a plus three from each of your compatriots who rolled, so. A three and the one for finesse. And then I'm gonna look for one more from my, where is my beer experience? As I say, where is my beer? Excuse me, Lousa, and start kind of looking my way toward the exit. Okay, uh, try to make like an awkward shuffle through. Okay, I love it, yeah, absolutely. Yep. All right, so adding five to this. Oh boy. Um, yeah, that's not enough. <laughs> uh, we got an eight on the die with fear plus five, so 13 with fear. 13. I'll expand my luck bender for him. Oh boy. Yes. Okay. I'll spend three hope and he can roll again. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's a, a little better, you know, at least with hope this time. <laughs> oh, that's a. Uh, Eight on the die, plus five still, so 13. Oh, no. Oh, it's least, oh, it doesn't at least end on fear, ends, ends on hope, but does fail. That is We're not better. getting out of here. That is better. So that is a failure with hope. So go ahead and mark a hope for yourself, Justin, because you do get to gain that hope. And with a failure, though... I'm going to say as part of this immediate shuffling and as you're all getting up in this hurry, Lousa kind of says, well, where are y'all going? Y'all are being very interesting right here and y'all are all getting up. At the same moment, the box is kind of like tripping over itself like a and the and Bill himself is just like a lot of commotion starts happening and although this dwarf in the corner had been snoozing peacefully. He's also been waiting specifically for someone. 
and he kind of starts and looks up in that exact same moment as y'all again i just love the joke halflings in a trench coat style i'll like look over at the sound and he makes dead eye contact with you jimbo and you see his like face kind of now i don't have any backstory on bruni this is your syndicate contact so you're gonna need to let me know what's going on as part of this I don't necessarily know yet why uh, Bruni's here in town, but again, former uh, colleague, uh, t you know, mining uh, companion, uh, nice guy. He was he was young, uh, he was fairly new, not as experienced as myself, but uh, I have no idea what he's doing outside of the town and why he's here. And uh, honestly, yeah, don't don't. Yeah, don't you don't have, have like bad opinion. blood. Why I mean, he was in the group. The group fell apart. Got a new group. Uh, I need to get just a little bit more context, and then I'm going to t I'm going to give you the details on why he's here. But for to help me shape the context, it's, it's very possible my my people are looking for me or still to get info into why the uh, where, where that big score landed. But but very briefly though. This is, when we talked offline, the reason that we talked about this was because he is your syndicate contact, right? That's the class uh, feature? Yeah, for a lot of those, it's uh, be connected to like my group, which my group, you know, was, you know, my just my my town. Okay. Uh, not necessarily that we're, you know, always, you know, working toward the same thing. Okay, uh, so it doesn't necessarily yeah. offer an advantage. Yeah, and I'm uh, just a someone that you know we got familiarity with more than anyone else here in town. Okay. So okay. he might be more willing to help out with stuff if we need him. I've got it. I know. That's, that's my interpretation of the uh, syndicate contact kind of thing. I'm going to use a fear. One of my fear that I have been hanging on to. I have two teeth and I have a bath token. In this case, I'm gonna use a bath token because I just think it's more fitting. It's from your homeland and everything. I'm gonna use that fear, and at this point. Bruni is going to jump up from where he stands and he is going to come over to you and he is going to take a little swing at you. Now, this is an unarmed attack. So I believe that I'm, I'm really not playing it for doing damage, just to be clear. I'm not going to make an actual attack. I don't think you'll hit well, oh. okay. Well, then let me goddamn try um, because I, I need to. I, I need to give a shot. So I'm gonna say that he has a plus one to his attack. Why would he not? He's a rogue, um, and that's a pretty middling rogue attack. But I'm gonna roll the d20 that wanted to come out to play because you've tempted the fates. And let's oh, see geez. what we get. All right, here we go. Oh, a natural one. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Oh. It's so bad. Okay. Bring you threw out your arm. Alright, is that yeah? Yeah. <laughs> On a natural one, I will absolutely allow you to explain why he misses you. I definitely think it's he he, he would have landed a good one, but it's just that dirt. Okay. <laughs> 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 nice. okay. And as it's good dirt. I'm also it's gonna say watch dirt. some dirt. Bruni's also been drinking for like two days, okay? Now, now... Bruni's fucking toasted. Uh -huh, Bruni is toasted. And as he goes and swings, he kind of trips over the crate again that is there scrambling at y'all's feet. And as he does, his knuckles graze your face, but it just slides right off. And he face plants on the ground and you hear, What? What is happening? And he kind of looks up with his eyes, very angry at you. Says, Jim, where have you been? Bernie, I got kicked out. What are you doing out of the hole? <laughs> what the fuck? Get back in your hole, Bernie. <laughs> Bernie. Get back in your Get hole. Get in the hole. You're out of your hole. You know oh, damn oh. well what I'm doing out of the hole. I'm looking for you, and I've been looking for you for the past six months. Where have you been? I, I got kicked out six months ago. I, I know, but we had a deal. It was always us. It was always us. And you know that. I have been Ooh. looking for you. Romance. This all makes sense. Well, no, not like that. Uh, 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 my, my coworker. He kind of looks at Adira <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> Good <Ew>. shit, Starry Eye. <laughs> I'm like, 
my husband is so much hotter than Jim. <laughs> and kind of looks back at Jim and says, now. He is. <laughs> like, yeah, we all know it. We all know he's hot. Like, and he kind of, and he looks back and says, if you had taken even a moment to try to get in contact with me, then you would have known that your family's looking for you too. And this is where that fear is going to come into play, okay? What's wrong with the family? He's, huh? Well, what's wrong with the family? He's going to reach into his pocket and he's going to pull out a letter. A thumb? Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh no! This They're went... murdering your family, Jimbo. <laughs> this went so Oh my god, a thumb. He's going to hand you a package or a, um, a, a stack of letters, okay? And they are all bound together and he hands them over to you. He says, now I, I heard that you were going to be here and I've been waiting for two damn days in this weird town. That one, Lausa goes, hi, she has been crazy. And I am not having it anymore. Now I'm going home because I know who a true friend is and a true friend would have found me. And I hope you're happy. You get back to your family. You owe them that much. And he is going to start storming out of the oh. inner circles. I have so many questions, Bernie, but save travels. I, I appreciate <laughs> it. I, I don't know why you have all my mail. <laughs> get back to your husband safely. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think that that's probably enough for a syndicate contact, right? Sure. If you have any questions for him, you could stop him from going. I'm a little confused. I'm just going to accept the mail and let Bernie go. All right. We will let you go through that maybe during like a long rest or something, but you now have a stack of paperwork uh, from your family. Uh, all right. So Lausa is kind of, as he's walking out, she says, oh my God, that is the most beautiful. And she like starts going down the stairs, following after him, chatting to him about his weapon. And they kind of leave the area. So you guys are left in this very fancy room where the entire den of Richie's <coughs> are looking at you. What are we doing? So we go into the fruit check. Or the letters. You just got yeah. letters and you're not going to look at them? No, yeah. We got, we, we got shit to do. It's a Jim doesn't here. care about his family. No, he does. But, like, <laughs> not oh, like, you know. uh... Hey, wow. I, I will tell you once, you know, we get a little more time later, I'll read them. But if the first one I open immediately, just or the first one, I'll start at the back in case that's the most more recent one. But just, oh, if it says, smart. like, hey, immediately get home quickly, then yeah, I'll say my bad. I should have looked at it more immediately. But I assume this is honestly probably more bills or like, you know, them being upset that I like didn't tell them where the gem yeah. was. Uh, the gem. Oh, the gem. Gem. I heard gem. And I was like, they can't find the weightlifting place. Like, get an elliptical. Him. They can't find him. Oh, man. So are we leaving or are we staying? What's the vibe? I mean, I, I might have misunderstood. I thought that this Whitefire Arcanist was a guest here, but if they have a house and they, like, you know, house other people, then I think we're in less of a hurry than I thought. Yeah, why would we deliver to a guest? You know, that they probably. I was, I'm a guest and I just got mail delivered to me. You know what? Valid. <laughs> I will say um, that. So we haven't talked about cell phones. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, there are no cell phones. Um, oh, thank God. But there are kind of in this world, okay? So I'm going to give you some context because, again, I understand that you're new to, to this world and everything. And this is something that kind of exists in a lot of tabletop RPG. There are things in this universe called speaking stones. And, Anora, whether or not you know it, you are going to need to mark this on your character sheet in your inventory because you have two. You have both a business and a personal speaking stone. <laughs> um, as part of Ridiculous. this adventure, you were... So first of all, one of your speaking stones, uh, and what a speaking stone is, is it is a stone, and you can tell me what those look like you know, at some point and everything, but they are paired magically with another stone somewhere in the world. And they can at any time speak back and forth like long, long, long range walkie talkies. Okay. You have one 
that is specifically meant to contact someone in Black Gum Hollow. But also, in this adventure, Marlo Fairwind did give you a speaking stone for her to stay in contact with you. And I'm going to say that at this moment, it begins to alert you to an incoming call. Now, Kayla, you tell me, how does it do that? What, is it a sound? Is it a vibration? Is it a smell? What does this speaking stone do? A smell is wild. <laughs> listen, it's been a lot of smells today. Yeah, it has been a lot of smells. Uh, it's a little rose quart and it starts vibrating in her bag. Amazing, okay. So <laughs> you, you oh. You guys all like, <laughs> see, like, like uh, as you guys all start hearing him. Uh, Anura, I think one of your bugs got out. Uh, now, are you okay. answering it? You can choose yeah. not to. Okay. Immediately, no. She's frantically like just searching through her little bag, and she finds it, and she pulls it out, and she's got it in her hand. She's ready. Okay. To receive the message. All right. So. Hello? Hello? Anora? Marlo? Anora? Marlo? Oh my god. <laughs> Darling. Where, where where are you? I, I haven't, I, I thought that we had agreed to check in with each other about every day and I realized that I had forgotten to check in yesterday, but I did, I desperately need to know uh, what is the status of the package? I'm in a hush. <gasps> I just oh, haven't right. found the arcanist yet. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, she, you know, I, I think that she's somewhere south of the Sunless Farms, but but honestly, you know, if you could remember that, uh, I don't want to worry you, darling. But it is it's pressing, it, truly, truly. Um, every moment that it's it's not delivered, catastrophe could strike. If you could at all get it to her, as it's grown legs, Marlo. Is that normal? The crate. The, the, the crate has grown legs. New Marlo. more more legs. It's, it didn't have legs when you gave it to me originally. Well, it always had legs. They just weren't unfurled. Yes, it had legs. Yeah, how Marlo, else would it get good? Did you want me to give you a normal crate that you would have to carry? You know we don't right. carry things. You're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. We'll get it there today. We're going to get it there. We're okay. about to leave this bar right now. You're in... You, Anora, this is important. You're in a bar. I'm Why are you in a bar? I'm sorry, I have guest privileges. Oh my god, not guest privileges. Listen, you don't you stay there longer than three days, I swear to god. They get they get what really happens? weened about those trees. What happens in three days? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happens in three days. You know why? Because I've never stayed there for longer than three days, but they talk about it all the time, don't they? Okay. We'll get this package delivered today. Okay. And I'm listen. I'm sorry for being cross. Kiss, kiss. Okay. It's a lot of pressure. I love you. Kiss, kiss. Okay. All right. Now, now you tell me, and you know, when, when something comes up, but uh, you, you okay. have a good day. I, 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 I'm, I'm cut. I'm cut. I, uh, Nora, I've got to go. Okay. Okay. Love you. Kiss, kiss. Bye. <laughs> and it stops. Okay. Fantasy oh cell phone call complete. <laughs> that was amazing. Is it, is it on speaker very all the time? Or yeah, is it, like, it is always. Yeah, on you speaker. you heard everything. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Guys, we gotta go. That's my friend, and she wants us to deliver this now. Immediately. Let's take care of it. nervous uh, about the three day thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I we, let's get out of here in under three days. She let's go said right that now. they get weird about it. Mm -hmm. They probably get pretty pretty weird about it. I'll turn to the crowd, uh, well, you know, the five people in the bar or whatever, and just go, bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> everybody yes, kind of know. looks up and says, hi. Uh, <laughs> hi. And, like, they're just very casually. We didn't even like, charge for this entertainment. <laughs> Y'all just like, and that's the name of the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, guys. So you guys are exiting, right? Mm -hmm. All right. We're heading so. back up. Out Fantastic. of the secondary location. All right, so y'all do, and and exiting the tavern, you know, you do still see your carriage has been again stowed away. You see people tending your horses as you're passing by, because, uh, but this time you are going in as you exit out of the tavern. You're heading towards the left. We are going to breeze past. Oh, go ahead. Question. Did we get our shoes back? 
Yeah, I was about to say we gotta get our shoes. Oh yes, that's such a fantastic point. Absolutely. As you pass by that line, you can see that now they have been taken off of the line and they are placed there underneath it, shining, glistening, with tiny trinkets inside of them. Each one of you has two little tiny trinkets, things of no consequence, but mark whatever you want. I'm gonna say each one of you has an acorn. One of you has a little toy whistle. One of you has, I saw someone else do this on a live stream and I just think it's so cute because it's critical role oriented. They were like, it's a trinket, a little carving of a bear. One of you has a little carving of a bear um, that you can name trinket. Um, whatever, someone has like a, 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 a functional but really bad toy compass. And one of you has one of those party crackers that you have at Christmas that you pull on the sides and they poof, and there's a little toy inside of it. It's a toy inside of a toy, and that toy is just jokes. Just jokes. The right? toy whistle. That one's mine. Oh, great. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was almost there. <laughs> the, uh, oh. I'll pick the... Uh, I want. That's okay. I want the uh, little trinkets bear. In the hopes that I could find the little kid with the missing tooth who was in the tavern oh, with his father okay. when we came in. Yeah, you absolutely can. For time, I think that we'll recap to that, you know. Oh, you know what? Ha no, yeah, we'll we'll recap to that, like, maybe next time. But certainly, you can find cool, cool, that cool. little kid. Yeah. Um, that is so cute. Yeah. All right. Did, um, who, did, did somebody take the cracker? Go for it. Does it have a little tiny crown in it? Yes, of course it does. Every Christmas <laughs> cracker that you have ever used has a little tiny crown in it. A paper crown, absolutely. What color is the crown? What color do you want the crown to be? It's This is our fantasy make-believe land. I can assign a color, though, if you're more excited about that, because it is kind of random, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sign okay. the color for me. I want this one to be, I love yellow. You know it's my favorite color. It's a yellow crown. So exciting. Almost a hat. Okay. <laughs> like, I put quite, it on, and then I side eye Anora. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> <laughs> I one more kind of, oh the compass the little toy compass so that one goes to Jimbo and each of you does have an acorn now as well so nice. okay nice. all right so you guys are going to do, do, do. all right yes okay so making your way past the homes of the village then through the farmlands of hush you see a variety of crops that have begun to cultivate a thin layer of glowing blue moss over the top of their fruits and vegetables. They pulse softly like a heartbeat as you pass. Among the thriving groves, you notice that the sablewood trees in this area have hundreds of unique faces carved into all sides, the eyes peering in every direction. I don't like that. Along this road, I'm, sure I'm going fine. to see, I'm going to say that along this road, you see coming back from the farms because I just, I can't pass up a moment that someone wants to have. You're going to see the little boy that you had seen waving, wandering up the path with a larger man uh, who is stopping on the trail to kind of wander down and he seems to be checking the moss. And the boy is standing there with a horse that he's kind of holding by the reins. And as he sees you guys, he waves as you guys are coming up the path. I go, smiley day to you, oh, lad. Um, I know you may have lost your tooth and not know where it is anymore, but I got this little bear toy, <gasps> if you would be interested. Why would you give me a toy for a tooth? Um... That it's is a good deal. Question. <laughs> it's a good deal. There's a lot I could do with teeth that, you but know, you might not need have anymore. The tooth anymore. I believe that if you put out good in there, the hope will bring the tooth back to you. Now I get a bell. It's all full circle. I love and bells. Bye. You're the cool. best fairy I ever saw. 
<laughs> Remember that name if you ever come across Canine Corso. He looks a lot like me, but less handsome. I don't know what you said just now. What's a what, what's <laughs> your name? You as a Canine Corso? Tank Mollerson. Spread the word. Tank Mollerson. Oh, I love you, Tank Mollerson. You're my hero. What's you from? You're not from here, right? No, no, I'm from the old. <laughs> The old God oh. Isles. <laughs> oh my God, that sounds ROA really, really land. crazy. What's happening no. over there? Uh, you know, a lot of old fairies just kind of hanging out. It's a bit of a retiree place. Y'all got lots of teeth that you're giving enough. stuff for? Mountains of teeth. <gasps> if I, if I lose more teeth, you give me more bells. No. These could have absolutely. <laughs> He's gonna punch all his teeth out, Tank. No. Why would I do that? It's <laughs> <laughs> never happened before. Why would it happen now? He like oh, looks like shut the fuck up. He's gonna ram his face into the tree. Tank. He looks down at the bear and you hear him mutter to himself, I'm gonna be witch. And then he like goes, Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Fairy Man. And he's gonna start turning to run across to his dad to show him the little trinket bear. Are you stopping him? Are you having any more like conversations with him? I'm just anything? saying, make sure to play safe. He has to be nervous now. <laughs> okay. I'm a terrible tooth fairy, <laughs> but I'm learning. We should also probably keep going. The parents always get upset every time he does this. Yeah, you guys... Shake on the back. You're you're a great tooth fairy, bud. Yo, you guys can see like as you're continuing to walk. And by the way, this kid left this horse just standing there. That this is an old mare, and she's not going anywhere. But he does like he's telling his father about it. His father's kind of like look at her pound, and he's pointing to his teeth and pointing to you. And the dad is like. Like, like so. Uh, the coat, guys. We gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> They're on to us. <laughs> okay, so there. We, I, I, I can't bypass a cute yeah, moment, you guys. I had to have it. So, all right. Um. So now moving on. So um. One tree, as you have entered this area, this gr thriving grove with all of these hundreds of unique faces carved into all of the sides, you progress deeper and deeper in, and these trees seem to get larger. The faces seem to be more weathered, like they have been here for a longer time. And at some point, there is one tree taller than the rest that bears the Arcanist home. It's impossible to miss, truly, as you had asked. It looks like an overripe persimmon hanging from a braid of rope as wide around as a giant's forearm, tied to a massive branch and counterweighted by a cabin-sized boulder lying at the base of the tree. The stone is marked with a collection of symbols and the cabin windows flash with a soft yellow-green light. What would you all like to do? We, we're just knocking, right? Can you knock? Because it's hanging on the tree. You gotta throw something. We're gonna at knock it? on the How tree. You there, Steven, your camera is doing that thing. No. Yeah. no. Steven, your camera is doing that thing. Give me a moment. Wait. Give me a moment. A moment, though. And we, I love also that we are playing musical chairs in the stream because of the way that it works. It's now mm -hmm. like I'm Anora, Kalish, Jimbo, Chris. <laughs> you are the dagger master named Rachel in this moment. Mm -hmm. Like, it gave not a single New one management. of us, <laughs> like, not a single one of us maintained our seat. What are you doing, Discord? You are drunk. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, there we go. Yeah, there you are. Yeah. I'm telling you guys, the solution is always plugging and unplugging. All right, great. <laughs> my my right. thinking was we could knock on the tree because the last one was hollow. I can only assume this one's also hollow. <coughs> There's no other option. I mean, yeah, I, I can also climb the, the tree. I, I mean, it's a tree oh, and yeah. I'm a, I'm, I'm a simian. Well, the trees get mad if we yeah, climb. Them. You know, with all their <gasps> rules, we I should probably the be trees are alive. Um, mm, yeah, they might get upset if I try to climb their tree. Yeah. Yeah, like more, I can path. Ridiculous. Path the tree instead, maybe. 
You're pat- you patting the tree. Well, if if there are if there you know touchy feely or you know upset trees. No. I remember in the bar. First, ask the tree is it okay to pet, knock the tree, and then when the tree doesn't kill us, then I knock on it. You're asking the tree for consent. To touch yes, it? Uh, tree, can I knock on you? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I don't speak plant, but I hope it understands my intent. You kind of, you do see the tree kind of like uh, the boughs of the tree <laughs> kind of tighten and draw up, almost in like a shrug, like it's never been asked this question before, and then it kind of. <laughs> twitches just a little bit just like that <laughs> it does shake the house a little bit and you do hear a, <laughs> but that might have been happens. enough y'all <laughs> and it relaxes oh, back Jim. down that is so funny to me okay <laughs> you're knocking on the tree okay yeah. so you knock knock hard does it sound hollow? I'll knock real hard. It does not sound hollow. Your hand hurts a little bit. Um, and after a few seconds of waiting, nothing really happens. There's no response from in the house, though you do, you do hear like faint little kind of almost cursing under someone's breath. from And the, the lights that you can see in the window do still flicker. We got one more dumb idea, but anyone else is welcome to try love dumb ideas hit me with it i throw the acorn at the house oh yeah Good i was job. gonna think like yeah. throw a little stone or something yeah that works mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. oh my goodness all right you're you throwing throw it like i'm trying to hurt the house <laughs> you're throwing an acorn at the house at, yeah like the window of the house like you're do you sure. have a boom box are you in the rain yeah like the window okay. the... yeah well not yet okay. uh, but it could be he has a crate yeah, we'll lift, up the, we'll lift up the crate like it's a boombox. So, I mean, <laughs> y- you certainly can do this. I'm going to need... I. Hmm, you tell me what trait you think this would be. I think probably finesse. Strength. What? Strength? I'm, I'm throwing the acorn as hard as I can. I know it's an gr- acorn. That's okay. Sure. Absolutely. But I'm throwing it real hard. <laughs> okay. Now, this is pretty high. Um, so... Let's see. But I mean, like, an arm could throw it up there. I think it'll be fine. I'm going to say again, though, it is going to be a 15. 15? Yeah. No, I'm actually going to say it's a 16. A 16. Case. Yeah. Slightly harder than medium. I'll go for it. Great. Fantastic. Give me that fear. Well, that's, that's a nine with hope. A nine with hope. Okay. Well, you do take the hope. But the acorn, it's not that you don't get it there. It does get to the house, but it's just not near the window. The strength, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just lands on the porch. The, absolutely, yeah. It lands right there on the porch. Yeah, 100%. Too graceful. Yeah. I'm going to uh, go ahead and just climb the tree. Okay. All right. Yeah. So for climbing the tree, I'm going to need an agility check. And I get advantage oh. on those things because I ha- am a simian. Great. Chris, what were you going to say? I was going to say, as a fairy, could I fly up in a system? Sure. As a fairy, you could just fly. <laughs> I know. I, I don't want to, you know what I mean? I want to let him try his, he, his climb. He's supporting us. Monkey's like I climbing. love <laughs> this. I love this that you're just sitting back there and you're like, yeah, you guys, Thanks. it is a pickle. It's Tink's crazy. not very intelligent, you know what I mean? But he's down for the boys, so I'm just... Okay, oh, I've him. got this, I've got this. I'm so ready for it, okay? I'm gonna let you help, or absolutely, but I have the I have the scene, okay? So go ahead and, Steven, you're going to make your duality dice check. Are you adding a hope at all to the experience type of a thing? Um. Yeah, I'm gonna add the don't step there experience that I have. Put your foot there. Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Hey, uh, Steven, you think you're a ridge born? Like, you know, this is a, a dangerous, like, I mean, it's not really a dangerous cliff, but, you know, it's, pretty, you know, ledges, but it's like, it, it itself is a ledge. Oh, I already, I, I already had advantage from, uh, the simian from the, 
But you Bounty also have – we're, we're about to pump in some fun stuff here, okay? Because – so, Chris, right, cool. I need you to mark a hope off. You are going to roll your hope die. Steven, you've already rolled your initial duality dice, right? Correct. But you are going to re-roll that hope again. All right. Chris, have you rolled yours? Uh, yeah. Steven, what, Chris, what is your number that you've rolled? Uh, seven. Great. Steven, what were your rolls? Um, a one and a five. That seven is going to be good. What was your fear roll, though? Uh, my fear was a three. Okay, so none of these are critical matches or anything, but that seven is better. Yeah, so... seven will get me um, ten, and then with my agility and my uh, uh, don't put your foot there, uh, that will get me thirteen total. With uh with hope with hope okay a 13 yeah. total with hope right uh -huh. okay so the the difficulty was 13 in this case okay so yeah. you just made it good job thank god you had yeah. your fairy friend helping you now you did we did use a hope but you restored a hope in your role so you're okay uh you don't have to mark anything off so i'm going to set this scene for you so um <laughs> As you, the Simia, begin to climb up this tree, uh, it is a difficult tree to grasp because it doesn't really love being touched like this. So you can see it kind of like bending and shifting out of your way as you're climbing it, making it difficult to do. And But you're making it, you're scaling it nonetheless. And then all of a sudden, tank in that moment, which you have to mark stress to fly. Is that right, Chris? Let's double check with the changes, sorry. Um, yeah. Yes. Okay, so make sure that you mark your stress. So at and the that... hope... Uh -huh. Oh, sorry. The hope only applies to him, right? Not if you're helping. Mm. If you I'm succeed sure with the hope question. on a... If you... Uh, like, um... So since he was helping me and I got a hope, I succeeded with hope, does that Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, hope? that's... You, it's still only it's you. It's still me. only yeah. you, Stephen. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, okay, so in this moment, though tank like there's got to be something he can do and without even thinking about it he just takes flight and he flies up and he's hovering next to you and he's just like come on buddy you could do it and he's like pulling you up a little bit as he's hovering above your head um that's precious yeah he's <laughs> but with that kind of encouragement you do scale all the way up to what effectively is kind of a wrap around porch around this circular persimmon shaped fruit. It's kind of more or less shaped like a dragon fruit, just to be clear, is the most accurate fruit that it would be shaped <laughs> like. Um, it has a wrap around porch and you kind of huh, uh, uh, and, uh, and there you now sit on this porch and tank is there kind of clapping you on the back like good job buddy <laughs> but you made it up yeah absolutely Ooh, awesome so what are you doing um well yeah after that harsh climb up i uh will uh lean over and wave down at the, the hill below. I, i'm gonna knock on the door <laughs> hold up the crate <laughs> It so as you are even yelling, I'm going to knock on the door. You're now in front of this house. And so you see pass by the window a face inside of this home. What you and Tank see as part of this is a seven foot mix of humanoid and firefly. The Arcanist is a fairy that moves in a combination of both very slow and suddenly jerky motions. Though her expressions are difficult to read, her emotions are very clear in her voice. She is old but spry and eyes, that, and eyes the group mischievously. As she's looking at you, she peers through the window. Are you the group that Emra sent from the capital? Oh my, you're rather late, aren't you? Naughty, naughty. Come in, come in. And in this moment, she is going to reach her hand 
kind of past her window and you see her make a little movement that you cannot see what she's hitting and the entirety of this house begins to descend down to the ground and as it settles there on the ground she steps away from the window and comes to the door and she opens it for the group and invites you inside in this moment, as you are all wandering inside, she looks at this crate who's starting to move through, but is too big to fit through the doorway itself and kind of clanks and clatters. And she says, you, back. And as it kind of and goes back, she says, now you stay put. And she does a little motion and you can see all of you a little dome, an arcane ward kind of settles right there around this box. And the crate itself, the legs kind of furl back into itself and it rests there. Coming out from all of the trees, a thousand fireflies come drawn by the light of this ward and settle around it, all kind of dancing around this ward. And you enter into the white fire arcanist's home. Inside, you notice that the treehouse is surprisingly spacious. The main room is a crowd of potion bottles, spell books, runes, plants, and small creatures of all kinds. But no one could classify this place as messy. It's clear that if anyone moved a single item, even an inch, the old fairy would notice. All right, now we are about two and a half hours in so i think that we are going to close for tonight as she looks at around at the group she again repeats herself and says well you are very very late and i'm told from marlo that this was a very important package i hope that it's not one of the wards of the city. Oh, if it was one of the city wards, if anyone were to find out, poor Marlowe's city would fall by daybreak, wouldn't it? I wonder how she would die. And that's where we're going to close the session for the night. Good. <laughs> Nur, how do you think it's going up there? <laughs> 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 All right. The voices were. Thanks. The voices were Amazing. great. They were beautiful. Yeah. Loved just it. wild voices from top to bottom, you guys. That is not usually how I do a lot of my voices, um, but this adventure has a very whimsical theme. Yeah, a little, a child, a dwarven lady, a little tiny robot, a clank that was. I love the fresh cut grass. Paying me to smell me. Yes. I yes. I was really getting nervous that you weren't going to let me smell you. And I <laughs> set that whole thing up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, Kaylin. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was sometimes. You know, anxious this, about this smell of princess for free. Place. That's. That costs money. Yeah, honestly, I don't think that this adventure is meant to be quite as um, ominous. <laughs> like, but uh, but I always play into ominous stuff because it's fun for me. And also, it's right there. Again, you guys know, I've said it before, I'm pulling so much from the supplementary materials. And it says they're right there. It's like... They can stay for three days. If they don't, if they stay beyond, they can do whatever. But if they start to abuse the guest privileges, they let the trees handle it. And I was like, well, that's my hook. Are you kidding yep. me? You let the not, trees. Not ominous. Yeah. Yeah. Not <laughs> ominous at all. So. Frightening. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we will pick up here now. In the next session, we should be able to close this out. Um, but we're going to start next session here inside of the White Fire Arcanist home. Again, she is a glow, a, a, a sorry, a firefly of a person. Um, so we'll get more into her background and what the mysterious package is next week. But thank you guys for joining us tonight. Yeah. Be hospitable. Everybody. All right. Yeah. 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 Like, or else that we will Guess leave it privileges. to the trees. Guest privileges. <laughs>